I am from Florida, Connecticut, Iowa, and who knows where else after this, but we are from different parts of the country. And my name is Henry Falcone from Flame of Fire uh, Kingdom Awakening Messengers. It is a blessing to be with you if you're watching this for the very first time. Um, we just encourage you to sign in on the chat line, tell us who you are, where you're from, and welcome to this broadcast of Preparing for the Greater New York Schenectady um, Divine Convergence. And we are here with some of our Team Converge members tonight, and so there's more going to be joining on, uh, joining us. And we're going to talk a little bit about that because is Team Converge a ministry that we're trying to make work, or is it just something that God is doing divinely about bringing us together to to do and be what He wants, which is basically the latter. But anyways, I'd like to welcome tonight uh, everyone to the to uh, the broadcast, and I'll let everyone introduce yourselves and where you're from, and um, and just uh, if you would do that, so. Um, you guys can start. Uh, my name is Ethan, and this is my wife Kelly, and we Hi. are, <laughs> and we are from Ankeny, Iowa. And uh, I'm Sarah Savitlik from Connecticut. Amen. And in a little while, we're going to have Amber and Jared Brooke coming in from uh, formerly from Iowa, Texas, and now Florida <laughs> in California. They've been, they've been moving around quite a bit by, by the hand of God. But it's awesome to be with you tonight. And um, we thank God for um, those that are joining. If you're watching this for the first time, uh, it'd be great if you just kind of let us know who you are, sign in, and so that we can welcome you. We'd love to do that. And if you have any questions, I want to make sure that we're broadcasting on Facebook. I always do that on, uh, on my Flame of Fire site. So I have to check my phone because I don't get all my comments. So. You can tell how professional this is. I have to look on my phone, but that's okay. But when, you know, one of the things I told the Lord about doing broadcasts is as I said, I, I said, I don't want to do a professional broadcast. And, and Lord, if, if, please, I don't want to do that. You know, I, I really didn't. You know, with, with, I mean, a lot of people do, and they're wonderful, and they're beautifully edited, and all that kind of stuff. Let us know who you are. There you go. With you. There you go. Now I can see the chat line. Okay, great. Sonia, God bless you. Jay Craig. God bless you too that are watching. Amen. See, without turning that on, that's our sister from um, uh, Philadelphia. And Jay, I'm not sure exactly where you're from, but God bless you for watching tonight. And uh, praise God. It's good to see you too. Amen. We miss you. Hallelujah. But, uh, you know, feel free to write. You know, Sonia, you've attended some of the uh, convergences with us. So, um, you know, please feel free to share, uh, you know, as, as you feel on chat. So anyways, welcome. So glad that you can be here. And um, hopefully uh, Amber and Jared will be able to get on. Uh, so maybe somebody text them for me and just see if they're, if they're able to get on. So can somebody kind of give them a quick text for me. Thanks. Um, but anyways, New York, New York. <laughs> We're not going to New York City, but um, we are headed. Our next destination is uh, Schenectady, New York. Hi, Cheryl. God bless you from Canada. Hallelujah. Our sister from Canada. Amen. Part of our team converge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Brother Chris. Thank you for doing that. That's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that. Praise God. Um, we have been in a, a, I have to say, a new, and I hate to say move of God because I hate that term a little bit because then we're looking for the next move of God. I think we're coming in a new reality of the kingdom of God. And God is bringing us, you know, I believe in working with us, the true working of our salvation. You know, thank God that we're born again and saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we thank God for all that the Lord has done in our lives and what we would call as uh, the church age. But, uh, you know, I, I've been sharing for a lot that we have really, uh, we are really transitioning now into a new day, a new prophetic day, the third prophetic day. And I believe the, of, of the kingdom age. And it's quite different. And with that shift, um, you know, for those of you that are watching for the first time, um, in 2020, um, uh, when everything shut down, we couldn't go anywhere, couldn't go to the store, could barely could go to the grocery store. How many you remember back then when we were locked down for how many months, couldn't do anything, you know, and uh, the churches shut down, people couldn't go to the churches, couldn't go to services, couldn't do anything, and everything came to a stop, you know, and um, I knew that, uh, I know that the enemy was surely trying to take a lot of people out and kill them and a lot of stuff and, you know, a lot of happening with our po politics and our nation. And you could see it. And I had like a real alarm going off in my spirit that, you know, something's changed. And I knew Donna and I, we looked at each other and we said, we're never going to be the same again. Not that we should be, 
But we said, there's no way. I said, we, we knew it. And so I have been in ministry for 35 years. You know, I pastored for over 20 years and then, you know, uh, was a missionary, prayer missionary for the last 15 years. And, you know, as much as we've moved with God, as much as we've experienced God, and we've had tremendous meetings and presence of God. And I remember last time we were up in New York, we went for 32 straight days. And the glory of God really began to manifest. We went from house church, house groups to different churches. And, and the Lord was so wonderful and powerful. And he came and he met people. But it was still, you know, as much as, 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 as God was moving in new ways, it was still was kind of fit, fit under a, a, like an old structure of what we've done. And I think back then we began to see God was breaking us out of the structure and the formula. I'll never forget one of the first things that he had me to do in in in, uh, in New York was he said, I don't want you to do worship first. I want you just to put music on and let people sit in my presence. Little guy did I know that would be a foundation for what a divine convergence was going to be. I never did that before, ever. And so and so people started coming and they sat and they waited on the Lord and they wrote down what they what they got from God. And I didn't do anything with it. Like maybe one, maybe one, maybe once in a while I said, could you share? I didn't think that maybe they should be sharing what they've been getting. But, you know, so they did that. I, the, the purpose was to really get our focus on the Lord, you know. And so, and God moved powerfully. And, you know, people came from many different places. We were asked to minister in several churches up there. And the Lord came and, and, and touched people's lives in the way that I've always seen him do it. You know, and how many of you know what I'm talking about? The, the way that we've seen him do it. Hello, Pastor Vine. God bless you. You know, and so, you know, normally what happens is that, you you know, you have worship time, some longer. And then, you know, then somebody comes up and says announcements, announces you as a speaker, you know, and then, you know, you come up and you share the word of God and you pray with people. And at those, those meetings, you know, one of the things that God has always put in my heart was to activate what was inside others. So I, I always call people, God would show me people to bring up and let them pray, like especially the kids. You know, God gave me a specific word in 2007 to make the first two rows for those that were 21 and under. So I asked the pastors when I go, I said, do you mind? I said, if we leave the first two rows reserved for the youth of our generation, you know, and they didn't mind. And that was God preparing me, God teaching me about what was to, about to come, how important the young people are, the youth to come into what the Lord is doing. Like we had to make a place for them. You know, like it was like I felt in my heart that there was really no place. They could say it and they were off in youth group or off in Sunday school. But, you know, but the Lord, even the little ones, you know, the, the little ones that were normally in nursery, I said, let them come, let them sit. And, you know, after after a while, uh, what the Lord had me do is have them come and sit um, and, you know, and say, hey, hello. Hey. <laughs> and welcome. God's got on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm sharing. This is Amber and Jared Rook from uh, Florida now, and uh, so somebody else is here too. Jay's Jay's coming on, so let me get Jay in here. Jay is from Jay is from uh, Sarah. What's it? Saratoga. Yes. Yeah, Saratoga, New York. Very close to Schenectady, and Jay's worked with us. And I was just talking to Jay about the the 32 days that we were in New York. I was sharing about how we began to experience maybe a birthing of something different and new and you know and where where you know if you remember we sat and we just let people sit and, and yeah. sit in the presence of god and some of those meetings went to two or three o'clock in the morning believe it or not now i'm not saying that's going to happen at the convergence but i mean <laughs> it's like like when the first shift left god yeah. came more and then when the second shift left it came more you know yeah. and so it's like it, it was like i'm trying to apprehend you there was an apprehending of the lord that we experienced and I know it changed Jay's life you know, oh, yeah. and, and changed my life. And, you know, and, and because there's something about the glory and the presence of God that changes you. Yes. And I'm sharing all that today to give you a little foundation about our last time in New York and what the Lord did. But I have to say most of the ministry was more with, of what we would call in the structure of a church service in order. Though right. we expanded it, you know, uh, but it was still being introduced. It was still preaching. It was still teaching in the way that we've normally done it but yet the lord was in it but i felt that after that we had gone as far as we could go that something revolutionary was about to break loose mm -hmm. didn't know what it was but i kept looking to that time in new york as as a lord you came in such a manifested presence way and glory that was so different though you were still using 
you, you know, like a, a leader of people to do that. But but in those meetings, God began to include others. And he would activate in the youth and the young people. And they would step up and they would just begin to go with the yeah. spirit of God. So we began to see that. And, and when they did, they transformed before our eyes. Yes. I mean, even the teenagers, they, I mean, they came in one way, but they left another way. I mean, then they would begin to, you know, really experience the Lord. But, you know, unfortunately, after tasting that, what, what was left of, was kind of going back to business as usual. We tasted it and right. then we went back to doing what we knew. 2020, something changed. And I call it the dawning of the kingdom of God age to be seen. It's been manifesting for many, many years you know, of, of the reality of, of the third day kingdom age that, you know, of, of what's here right now. And those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, well, uh, you know, I, bear with me a little bit here. We changed prophetic days yeah. from, from Christ to the year 2000 was, was two days. Peter said a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day. In 2000, we entered into the third day of the church, church, that that third day brought a change from the way that we have sought the Lord to the to the, to to what I see now is a complete revolution, a revolutionary change of gathering together as the body of Christ. That's what I'm saying. And we began to see that change beginning to happen back in the late 2010, 2011, 12, 13, 14. We began to see a divine shift beginning to happen, but not really knowing what that was in particular. And so as, as 2020 came down, I knew, you know, Donna and I knew that things had changed and that the kingdom of God and its reality, which is what we're supposed to preach, preach the kingdom of God is at hand. It doesn't say preach the kingdom of just salvation at hand. And I mean, we got to be saved. That's really important. That's the first work of it. But he did say preach the kingdom of God, which is salvation and everything else God is and what salvation brings you into. The fullness of what who and what god is and our relationship with god and that is you know um what the lord desires and so i knew you know that something was changing when we couldn't what when has the whole world and the church shut down when is every church basically shut down you couldn't go for months and pastors and leaders didn't know what to do so they started broadcasting on on, on online because what else can you do they can't come to the church and people got used to watching you know services at home but even with the change, you know, I think when everything went, you know, stopped, that was the time the Lord was doing this. Revelation 3.20. I stand at the door and knock. You know, if any man will hear my voice and open the door and let me in, I'm going to come in and I'm going to sup with them. I'm going to, you know, and they're going to sup with me. And I don't have time to go through all of this, but that was a very critical knock at the door for everyone in the body of Christ. God brought everything to a stop for a reason. Perhaps he wanted to bring a change. We know the enemy tried to bring a change with that reset and all that kind of stuff after the election. But, but so much more does God want to bring a change and a completely different reset. The reset because the kingdoms of this earth are going to become the kingdoms of our God in Christ. There's going to be one world government on the earth, but it's not going to be the Antichrist. I can tell you that. Hmm. God's government is going to be established on the earth. Amen. And we know that. Praise God. And that's a good thing. And so, you know, so I, we knew something stopped. And I looked at Don. I said, we can never go back to where we were. And so I don't know why we did this, but we said, all right, Lord, what do you want now? How many of you kind of sense that? How many, how many of you, even on our team, got a sense that, man, something really happened? Yeah. And, and, and did you all get that same feeling? Like, man, we're not going back to where, who else felt that way? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, how did you guys talk about it? What did you say? I, to I don't think it was uh, until 2021 <laughs> that I had that revelation, but it was in 2021 after the entire year of 2020 that I woke up one morning too and went out into the living room and walked over to Jared and I said, we're not going back, are we? Because I could feel the desire in myself to go back to normal. I was just like, man, I just want normal again, you know? But it hit me when I, when, as I was saying that, I felt that sense of like, but we're not going back, are we? And so then I had to make some adjustments. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else want to share about how they felt around that time? Like you might have known, but you didn't know, but you sent something. Who else wants to share about that? 
Well, I know in um, at, uh, the church we were going to at the time, I, we were gathering for so many more prayer gatherings. Um, and there was just this sense, we were also fasting a lot more. It was like we as a, a body were starting to recognize that things were, were not going to be the same. And we just felt the need to press into God more and um, fast more and really lift up our nation um, during that time. Um, yeah, so I was kind of getting that with other people I was running with at the time. Yeah, yeah, because, you know, with the shift, because you know, everything initially felt like it was changing, you know, from our perspective, just in the natural. And so we knew that even in just the natural, like things were definitely not going to go back to normal. And and so there, th and there was just this heightened sensitivity to what was going on in the spiritual realm that, you know, all, there was no choice but to really just react to it in, in those moments. And, you know, like I said, we began really tapping into the intercessory side of prayer and just really just pressing into the Lord. And um, so, yeah, definitely on the same page. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How about you, Sarah? Yeah, I remember that was when I was, uh, I was a junior in high school and I just remember it kept getting this feeling like th things are not going to be the same. And I knew that it wasn't just, it wasn't just about COVID, that it was something spiritually had changed. And to be honest, I wasn't even that much of a, you know, spiritual person, but I sensed it. I sensed it. And I just kept saying to my mom, I don't know what it is, but we're not going back. And I now, obviously, I see the revelation of that. And in my own personal life, that was the time where the Lord really started to draw me out of things, draw me away from friends. My school shut down completely. So that I definitely felt that shift as well. This is critical what we're talking about because it's really going to help us explain why God is sending us to Schenectady. How about you, Jay? Where did you kind of get a hold of? Yeah, um, I definitely felt the shift. Uh, almost like I had I had been experiencing a shift for a long time. You know, ever since I, I came into contact and we had those meetings back in you know seven eight years ago now, and uh, nine. And it was almost like things were kind of finally coming to a head for like the world, you know, it's almost like the time, you know, before, prior had ended and it's almost like now everybody's coming into this like time to wake up phase. And I noticed that people were starting to almost like they would either check out or they were like waking up, you know, it was like, yeah, either, there was like this split of like, either you're checking, like you're completely checking out of what's going on where it's like all of a sudden you're much more open to the things of the kingdom. And I saw it in particular with my, my sister, especially she just started to like come alive in the things of the kingdom and was like, and just like her eyes were open. Like there's, you know, and there was others like her where I just saw the eyes open and just a receptivity to the kingdom where they couldn't see it before. All of a sudden it's like, okay, I can see, I can start to see this now. And, and the Lord um, had me start a home group. And I just saw such like, a, you know, it's like people were like, we can't just keep doing what we were doing. You know, people were open to, to doing new things into the kingdom, to kingdom things, you know, like they, they realized that you, we couldn't just keep doing church as usual. So that was encouraging to me in, in spite of everything that was happening. Yeah. And I, I think for, for, for a lot of my friends that are pastors, Bible ministers, the uncertainty of where we were going, Yeah. You know was really heavy on their heart what do you do with the people that you can't meet with you can't pray with you can't talk with you know and so you can't fellowship with because of the social distancing and not being able to leave and all that kind of stuff and and i i saw a shaking in the leadership in the body of christ during that time and you know and and you know okay what do we do now where do we go now and i really believe that was uh you know though the enemy brought this you know, sickness and disease to people in it, God was using it as a sign to us that, you know, that, you know, things have changed. You got to wake up. You got to realize you are not where you were. You're not in the same time, you're not in the same day, you're not in the same hour. And it was right after my mom had just gone home to be with the Lord um, uh, in early March before the lockdown came. 
And I was so blessed. And my mom was, you know, a real spiritual woman of God, a prayer warrior, intercessor. And I'll never forget it. On my last time, she was really frail. I took her out to dinner. She looked at me and she goes, she goes, Henry, everything's changing. She goes, don't worry about who's coming and who's not coming. You go on with God. You go in the direction that God wants you to go because everything is new. She goes, God's even going to bring you new people that you're going to be working with and laboring. And don't worry about what everybody else says. Okay, now she had severe dementia. Okay, so she came right into her normal self and prophesied the word of the Lord to me. I had tears streaming down my face in the restaurant. She goes, and she goes, and God is providing everything you need to do the new. Do not look back. And this is right. And then about five days later, she went home with the Lord, you know. And so I felt that when her going home and we we had some other sisters that we loved that were around the age group that went home, like a generational shift happened. A generational change happened. And that, that 2020 was a pivotal change for the generations from that generation that led us to coming to our generation, now you younger generations, of coming into their place. And, you know, that something new was coming. And because they were that you got that God was now doing a new thing and the, the change of leadership has changed. I think Billy Graham had gone home and some of the other real pioneers of the Lord had gone home in the last couple of years that a generational leadership changed. And and a generation that was no longer going to live in the wilderness, but had to be that Joshua generation to go in and take the land. And, you know, and, and all those 18 and under back in, in that day, you know, they had to, um, you know, uh, they were the ones that were going to go into battle. But before they can go into battle, they had to wait three days and get circumcised because that generation wasn't circumcised. So there was a cutting away and then they had to go across the Jordan River. And so they had to be prepared and positioned to go into a new place. They had to be prepared and positioned to go in and take the land. And that's when I kind of felt that 2020 and 2021 really did was like there's been a spiritual circumcision in those couple of years to prepare us and position us for what God is now doing. And so, and so I looked, when I looked at Donna and I said to her, I said, we're done. I said, I don't know what that means, you know? And so uh, someone started to really, I had just started to doing a couple of broadcasts. I, did, I didn't want to do broadcast, you know? And I, I, but people said, you need to start sharing what God is giving you. I said, I, I write, I'm a writer. I don't want to, I don't like being on the screen. I don't like that. I don't like videos. And honestly, I didn't want to do one because of a couple of reasons. I didn't want to do a 30 minute teaching video that that looks canned and stereo you know and i i don't like the personally i can't do something that's not real i don't want to put these things in the background to make it look like a, a huge ministry i don't want to do that because that's not my, my life in relationship with lord has never been that it's just me been read me and him the, the way he made me and so if we're going to do a broadcast you know i felt the lord wanted to do that and so I started doing, I felt like the Lord prompted me like doing daily briefings. So I started what they called the spiritual daily briefing and God began to start speaking and he opened up Revelation chapter one through five in a way that I had never seen before. I knew it, but he said, this is where you are. You're in a complete change of day and season. And in that call, we see Jesus differently. When John the beloved sees Jesus, he doesn't recognize him. He doesn't know his voice. And because he's never seen Jesus in his glory, he's never seen Jesus in the glory that was the glory that he had before the foundation of the world. And I've taught a lot about this. So if you're interested in it and learning more about that or hearing more about it, you can go to our Facebook page and just go to the video section. So there's three years of sharing this with him. But anyways, uh, he saw him differently, which means he had to respond to him differently. And, you know, he had to learn how he was speaking with a different voice, the voice of a war trumpet. And when he turned around, he, when he saw Jesus, he didn't recognize him. It's because his eyes were like, you know, like fire. His hair was as white as snow. His face was like the, the, the sun at noonday. He had seven stars in his hands, right? He had the white robe that was glistening. He had the gold sash around his face. And his feet were burning as, 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 as an oven. He said, write down what I need to tell you to the seven churches. See, that's the shift, I believe, that began in 2020, that that reality is now to be seen, that we are about to see Jesus and experience him, not as the, the lamb that we knew or the baptizer of the Holy Spirit of the, uh, and, and all the things that we learned in the outer courts and all the things that we learned in the holy place, that we are about to go behind the veil okay, and, and be, begin to experience him 
as the king of glory. And Psalm 24 exploded, you know, about who can ascend the mountain of the Lord and who can go, you know, uh, you know, to you know, go up his holy hill. He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. And as they went up, he said, this is a generation that will seek his face. That's why it said, this is a generation that will seek his face. And all of a sudden, I believe this is why it's such a generational shift, because that's happening. There's a generation in New York. There's a generation of young believers. There's a generation of my age believers that are still young in heart, you know, that are, are hearing. We need to go up the mountain of the Lord and, and, and to come up there. And then and when, when it gets up there, it says, lift up your head, O ye gates, and lift up your head, you uh, age abiding doorways. And then there's a command. So we're to look up, right? And to lift up our heads and look up. And that's what 2020 was to bring. Stop looking this way. The church is no longer going on this horizontal plane that we've always gone in. You know, all of a sudden it's the vertical that's coming into existence. We were to look up. And who are we to see when you look up? Did it say Jesus the Savior? Did it say Jesus the Redeemer? Did it say look up and see Jesus the, uh, uh, you know, the, the healer? Though he's all those things. It says look up. Right, it's lift up your head, O ye gates, and lift up your head, you age abiding doorways, and do something. Let the king of glory come in. And then it asks the question Who is the king of glory? And that is so critical. That is the question for the hour that we live in right now. Are we lifting up our heads so that we can see Jesus, experience Jesus as he's revealing himself in the book of Revelation? Now, what's this got to do with divine convergences? Everything. Everything it has everything to do with it because we have to find and be in a place where we can lift up our heads, where we can lift up those everlasting gates and in a place where we can let the king of glory come in. Because when he comes in and I stand at the door and knock and if any man let him in, let me in, I'm going to come in and sup with them in a personal way deeper than they've ever known in their walk with me. I'm going to reveal myself as the Omega God, the finisher God. I'm here to complete you. I want you to see that me, that me, the God that started this good work in you, is going to be faithful to complete it in you. You can't see yourself finished. You can't see yourself walking in the authority and the dominion that I have given you. But but I'm going to show you myself. I'm going to reveal myself in you. And you're going to see that the miracle that started this work in your life is the miracle that's going to complete it. Because he's a, he's a cornerstone and he's a finishing stone. And I'm going to complete what I started. And that is what the young generation is looking for. They don't want mushy, mushy, whatever, you know, where you know, do this, do that. Here's the 10 steps. Here's my 10 steps of finding out. Here's point one, point two. They want, give me God. Give me God. I want God. I want to talk to God. I want to walk with God. I want to live with God. I want to see God. I want to know God. And I want my life to be filled and consumed with God. And everything else that's in the way of that, get it out of the way. That's what's burning in their hearts, you know? And, and so the Lord sees that and the Lord knows that. And he knows the, hot, the cry of our generation that's been hungering and thirsting and desperate for God. They don't want the religious trappings anymore. They got sick and tired of being sick and tired, you know? And, you know, they're, they're done with the holy place ministry. And, and Hebrews chapter nine, it says, that, and the priests enter in to the holy place ministry with offerings and sacrifices. They bring their ritual. Hebrews nine says they bring their ritual acts of worship, worship. But they, but it says never can that worship that they bring in the holy place ever complete or finish and cleanse the conscience of the believers. As long as that holy place ministry remains a recognized standing institution, it blocks the true way of holy of holies. So I would say. In 2020, God ripped that veil in reality to show us I'm. it's time to get out of the outer courts. It's time to get out of the holy place. And it's time for you to live in my glory realm. It's time for you to live behind the veil forever and ever and learn how to function there, live there, dwell there so that, that we can become married to the Lord as one with him for his end time purposes. 2020 was like, to me, like earth shattering that that veil, like when Jesus, remember when he died, shh, that veil torn into that, well, I think that spiritual veil that's been over the church was ripped. And there's been a call, a call, a clarion call to, long before 2020. But now it's a trumpet sound. Come. Now all things are ready. Come. Everything's ready. That Jesus, Luke chapter 14, when, the, when that man has prepared the supper 
and everything's ready. A call has gone out from 2020. All things are now ready. And so he says, go to the invited ones and command them to come. But we know what happens. The invited ones, the ones that should have came, the ones that should know that when God calls, you answer right away, said, you know, very politely, come all things are ready. I, I, please have me excused. I have a job. I work 50 hours a week. It goes to another one. Come, all things are now ready. Listen, I just got married. I got my family. I got soccer practice. I got to take my kids doing this. Uh, you know, I, I got all these things. I got to go grocery shopping. I got to vacuum. Can you come back a little later? I, I'll come then. And then the fine one, the, fine, the, the, the then he comes to the one, come, all things are now ready. And he says, hmm. I'm, you know, I'm doing this construction project in my home. I'm redoing the kitchen and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm putting new carpet down. Can I finish this first? Those are the issues of life. In 2020, God was looking at the issues of life. Where are we going to go? Do you want me? Do you want to see me in my glory? Do you understand that where you are and your walk with God right now, you will not make it and you won't be prepared. You won't be positioned because what you have learned was for another day, that day of the church age. But where you're walking is you're walking in now to the end times and the entrance into the third day and the entrance to, to where we're going to see the millennial reign of Christ. So you got to be prepared for what's coming. You got to see what's coming. And God stopped everything to say, who will come when I call? And so at the end of 2020, when things started to break up a little bit, I was speaking to the Lord because we, you know, obviously we couldn't travel. We couldn't any, go anywhere. And he dropped in my spirit the two words, divine convergence. I said, what's that for? He said, divine convergence. I want you to have one. I said, I'll gladly have one, Lord. But what is it? Because this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you to come and meet with me. I'm going to start right here where you live in Navarre. I want you to find a place and I want you to come and I'm going to reveal myself to you as the bridegroom king. I want to meet you and I want you to invite others to come. And tell them there's no agenda but me. I'm the agenda. Seeking my face, seeking, seeking my face is all I want. I want them to come and just worship me. I don't want a plan. I don't want you to talk about miracles. I don't want you to talk about what you think I'm going to do. I just want you to come to me. And I'll show you what I'm going to do. You know, and, and, and invite people to come. I, I said to Don, I said, this is what God wants me to do. I said, who's going to come to a meeting where there's no guest speakers? There's no topic. You know, there's there's none of those things. Who's going to come just to minister to the Lord and and worship him? And surprisingly, you know, we had about 20 to 20 people who came. And all we did was spend that time waiting on the Lord personally. And then we just began to wait on the Lord collectively. And God came and we experienced him as that bridegroom king. I couldn't even make an altar area. I had to set a table. I, I literally, we made a bridal table for the bride and the bridegroom. It was all decorated as if you were at a wedding. And when people came up to that, that table and knelt before the Lord, they were shaking the power of God, the glory of God. God began to do inner workings in their hearts and changing them in such a way that it was like incredible. I had never seen anything like that before. I mean, and the, and the people who came, Jay, you were there. There was a knitting of the body of Christ together. In yes. a way we had never seen, right, brother? Very much so. Total strangers. Oh, yes. Give, give me a quick de uh, description of what happened. Yeah. I mean, we just, it was kind of like we just stepped out in faith and was like, all right, Lord, like we just want to meet with you and whatever you want to do here. And just as we entered in and sought him, you know, as just, just with that bridal heart and just, you know, Lord, we just want to meet with you. We want to be with you. The Lord just, you know, he drew us. He brought us in, you know, new dimensions of his glory and also just that love relationship but it's just it was cool to see certain people there that we'd never met before just step out and just begin to function in that place and just begin to minister to the lord and um the lord just knit our hearts in that place um and you know we were family we were family in that place we all you know it's like that coming to that table we not only were marrying him but with, you know one another in a sense in the spirit you know the lord was knitting us together and it was just it was beautiful it was just now it's it was just so cool to see that as like his first work to knit us in his love like that. And we began to write down what he said. And it was amazing because what one heard, somebody else heard, and it built upon each other. And we were taught by the Lord. There was so much teaching and impartation from heaven through his body, through his body doing it. It was, it was incredible. 
And everybody's testimony is that we have met him as that bridegroom. It was sweet. It was beautiful. People who have never experienced the Lord, the Lord came and danced with them. They felt the presence of God dancing with them. And these older ladies are crying like a baby. I got to do the wedding dance with the Lord. He was touching them and overwhelming them, you know, restoring them, healing them, all the generations. We had uh, Jay stepped out and began to play on the keyboard, which he had not done before, you know, yeah. in public. And then we had another brother who stepped out and played, and he'd never done it in public. But when they came together, it was like they played together for their whole life. Right. People picked up flags and began to use flags that never used flags. My grandkids got so touched by God, they said, we have never experienced God like this before. She, he goes, this is fun. And so from the littlest to the oldest, we were changed and transformed. And that convergence was a divine encounter with God that began to change and shape our lives. And I honestly thought that would be it. I didn't think of any more, but I, I got home and you know, I forgot one of the prayer meetings, we had a time of praying in tongues that was like for a long time. And then God gave like a, 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 a the interpretation of those tongues about being ready and getting ready for what the Lord was about to do. And then I went home and probably about three days later, he said, Colorado, Colorado. Colorado. I said, I've been to Colorado. I said, I want you to go to Colorado. I want you to go to Loveland. Well, I've been to Loveland, Lord. I've done a lot of ministry in Loveland. I want you to go to Loveland, Henry. I want you to meet me there as the King of Glory. I'm going to reveal my glory there. And so I talked to the people in Colorado. I said, the Lord wants us there. You want to come? And I began to put it on Facebook. And, and I started to start sharing about what was going on. And Two people that I know and I've gotten to know pretty well began to see me talking about Colorado. Isn't that right, Amber and Jared? Yeah. And tonight we're kind of laying a little foundation about, you know, what, why, why is God doing this? Why is this different? Why is it new? And, you know, and what do you experience and what are we going to experience in New York? So, you know, can you kind of just share just a little bit about why you came and you know what what was in your heart because there are people out there tonight that i believe are hungering for the more of god the thirsting of god and why go to a convergence yeah um so we just we just sense that uh, the lord was really going to show up um in colorado and did he ever and we encountered his reality um so profoundly and it was it was just so refreshing to get outside of the, um, the um, just the pressures, the pressures of life, the pressures of being in a church and uh, taking, you know, taking a respite and just getting away with the Lord and uh, just, just spending time with him. And uh, his peace was there and uh, seeing him move through all of us uh, was was so encouraging and so it was a reintroduction of of the lord and uh, we were just we were just caught away in a uh, caught away in god yeah when when you were talking um i was thinking about the scripture in song of solomon that talks about the beloved behind the lattice you've taught on this in in different times and I felt like my relationship with the Lord up until hearing about Colorado was a little bit like seeing Jesus behind the lattice. I would hear, you know, testimonies or different encounters that people had had with the Lord. I'd had encounters, you know, in my closet with the Lord where I felt like I was seeing him through that lattice. You know, I was catching a glimpse of his beauty and one glimpse is enough to make you ravenous for God and for more of God. And so I really think that when we heard Pastor Henry's, um, you know, description of a convergence that all the agenda was going to be removed and we were only going to be with the Lord, that ravenous hunger to, you know, I didn't even fully know how deep that hunger went until you start hearing somebody talk about Jesus and just being with Jesus. And then your heart starts to leap out of your chest, you know, and you're like, that's what I want. That's, that's what I want. I just want to be with him. I don't want anything in the way. I just want to be with him. And so um, Jared had shared with me the invitation to Colorado 
And I knew instantly that we had to go, we had to be there. And meeting the Lord there was like the lattice was removed. I mean, meeting the Lord there was like so personal, so intimate, seeing him as the king of glory. It felt like his, the fullness of his glory was exposed. I wasn't seeing light, you know, through the veil anymore. Like you were saying, the veil had been ripped and there he stood, I mean, before us all in his glory. And it, there was the personal revelation of his glory where I was seeing his glory personally. But then as we all started sharing that personal experience, it was that was when the glory of the Lord started to rise upon us all. And it was a new dimension of his glory as it started to shine in his body, as we started to share what the Lord was speaking to everyone. And so, I mean, that that time is so sweet. That time was so sweet with the Lord. And and, um, you know, it just I've, I've said this before, but it just makes you more hungry. I mean, once you see him, you want more. You want more of him. You want to know him more. And um, yeah, to have everything removed and just have him. Now, you have been to and I do you feel that anybody wants to contribute, you can, you know, just raise your hand and we'll let you share because we'll share a little bit about, you know, um, about what we've experienced and then as what we can begin to experience and hope for in New York. But, you know, one of the things that when, when you came you know, to it and, you know, you just, you just opened your heart up. It took a little while, you know, because, okay, but you know, like, okay, I can really let loose here. I can really just meet God here, you know? And uh, would you say you, you've been to a lot of conferences, probably or some conferences and meetings and stuff like that. And I'm not saying those are bad. And we get a, we get a, we get, impartation from the speakers and from being with the Lord. Why is this different? Why is this different? Why, how, how different was it? And how is it different? I'll ask you, Amber and Jerry first, and then we can go. Why is that different? And why was it, was it more, was it transformational for you? Hmm. Yeah, it, it was different in, um, in a conference, um, or at a service. Um, everybody's in a seat, you know, we're all, we're all spectating and when, when we're listening to the word of God and that's amazing. Um, but we're, but we're still spectating. And so it, when we went to Colorado, everybody had a place, everybody, everybody uh, got to get up, everybody got to share, you know, what was God doing in, in them. And so there was a, there was an encouragement and an edification and a confirmation of what God was doing. And on top of that, um, with you being a fivefold minister, um, when when God showed us things and we stepped out and shared like, hey, you know, I, I believe this is what the Lord was saying. Uh, you were able to direct us and say, yeah, that is what God is saying. And so we got to each of us. We watched each of us grow in confidence and, and, and recognizing the voice of the Lord. And that was so encouraging. And once we started to recognize that we we all were hearing God and, and he was giving us a uh, all similar things. It just really took everything up another level spiritually. Um, yeah, the first the first memory that came to mind was when we first walked into the room in Colorado and just honestly, like how empty it was in the sense of there was literal space to move around. And so in worship, we had room and space to dance. There was space to um, use the flags. The altar area was completely open. And so we were each free to follow the promptings of God. Those promptings didn't have to be squelched, you know, because for instance, if I'm sitting in a, in a seat, like Jared was saying at a, at a church and I have a, a prompting to dance, there are some churches that may allow you to do that in the back, or maybe there's a flag ministry where you're able to be a part of the ministry. But as far as the entirety of the body uh, coming together to really be able to follow that prompting, there's really no freedom for that in a lot of, in a lot of ways, or even maybe to go up to the altar area. The altar space was free for God's people to come up as they were prompted. And so, um, that has been, you know, a word that I've used over and over again is there was so much space for people to move 
move in worship, move toward the altar, you know, sit down. If, if, if all they wanted to do was just sit and be in his presence, they were free to just sit and be in his presence. Um, so, and then, yeah, another, another thing is like what you talked about is, you know, Pastor Henry mentioned, there's no, there's no guest speaker. And so there's, we're not sitting down to listen to someone else's revelation about the Lord. We're actually sitting to receive revelation of the Lord for ourselves. And then we all come together and we're able to share that revelation that we each received from him. And so we all receive a greater revelation of the Lord because we we get to see that multifaceted diamond revealed through each one of his people. And that's so important because I need Jared's revelation of Jesus because it adds to mine. I need Sarah's revelation of Jesus. And when when that revelation of him, how Sarah you know, is seeing him, how Jared is seeing him. I mean, just the, the, the depth of revelation that we all receive, we all supply what each one needs. And so there's so much space for that to happen for the Lord himself to move because those promptings aren't us, they're him. And so if someone wants to get up and dance, you know, I'm not, I'm being prevented from dancing, but the real the, the real heart behind that is the Lord is being prevented from dancing. That's the ultimate tragedy is that he wants to move within us, move within his bride. And um, just it's 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 so grieves him when he's not able to move in that oneness with her. I mean, that's his great longing, right, is to be one with his bride and to be able to move with her. And each of us are a piece of her. And so that's that. <laughs> That's, that's really awesome. Um, two things that, you know, I'm going to go up to Sarah next here a little bit, but you talked about, you know, as wonderful, I've been to great conferences and I've got impartation from that, but I was really a spectator, you know, and th and that's what I think that we learned in the holy place, how to be spectators. We Everybody has a function and certain people have functions, but where's my place? Where's my function? And I think that there are so many in the body of Christ that are saying, where is my place? They're not looking for a position. They're not looking for a title. They just want to know where's my place, where I can be everything that God created me, created me to be. And somebody's not saying, sit down, son. You know, you, it's time for the word or it's time for the announcements or whatever, you know, or there's no room or, or, or a select group of people do flag ministry, a select group of people, you know, do the worship team. It's not that others can't be on it. It's just, it is what it is, you know, but in, in, in here, you know, I don't have to be part of the flag ministry. I am a flag ministry. I don't need to be part of the worship team. I am a worshiper. You know, it's like it's different because you become those things. And Sarah, you wrote today on your on your on your Facebook page. It was amazing, by the way. I hope you, you really described it. And so maybe you could help describe that to to your generation. And because finding a place where God wants you is a big. It was a big deal for you, right? And changed yeah. your life. Yeah, it was huge. So before coming to a divine convergence, like I just kept asking the Lord that question, like, where is my place? Where do I fit? And not to be like a position or something because my place is in him. But it was just like such a longing to just be with others who love the Lord like I did in a place to grow, you know, and I just like, I remember, you know, there was one church that I had gone to and there's nothing wrong with this church but I looked at the worship team and I like went home and cried because I was like God like I want to be up there worshiping you you know with other people but I I wouldn't be allowed to do that I wouldn't be allowed to bring my flute so when I heard about um the divine convergences I you know I instantly knew that I was supposed to go and I like me playing my flute was so welcomed me going up to the altar was so welcomed there was a place for me to just worship god and in that he met me in a way that i've i've never experienced before in my whole entire life and it's changed me ever since and i just love how simple it is how like the church wants to make finding god so like complicated um, like you were saying, like the 10 steps or, you know, listening to someone else's revelation. You know, I, I love to hear 
other people's revelations, but I also want that revelation for myself too. So that then like Amber was saying, so that when you're getting something, it's like, it just adds to what the Lord's given me. And it's the way it's supposed to be, you know, that we, that the Lord is each giving us each part. So it really did change me. And, um, I mean, once I found these convergences, I knew I had to stay. I just like latched on. <laughs> I just latched on to you guys because I, I, once I, the Lord led me here, I was like, there's no way I'm uh, going back. <laughs> there's no way I'm going back to, you know, being, you know, by myself or, or no other place uh, is fit for me. No other place works for me. It just doesn't work. So, and another thing that like I was thinking the other day was that like I was not made for sitting. Mm. I was not made for sitting. And it's more of just like the the heart position of sitting right. and just, you know, just sitting there and, you know, spectating. That is not what I was made for. And that's not what you guys were made for. It's not what our generations are made for. We were not made to just sit there and stay there because when we sit there we don't go anywhere we the lord we can't we can't go any further we can't the lord can't grow in us and move through us and i think i what amber said about you're actually preventing the lord i mean that's like really serious and i mean not something i would ever want to do and you you really God changed you a lot. Would you agree in the last year? I was looking at a photo of myself today from like six months ago, and I can literally like see the change in my eyes. Like I'm like my, like I, I can just see like that God has broken so many things off of me. And I feel so much joy that I didn't feel back then. And he's just, I mean, he's made me like a completely different person. That's the truth completely different in six and a half months almost did you ever imagine that that change would bring you to cities throughout the nation did you ever have that <laughs> on the radar you know it was it was kind of a, a distant thought once yeah you know um but like yeah it, it popped into my head once i was like you know because I think I was thinking about what you do, how you go from city to city, but it was distant, not anything that I thought would happen so soon, you know, and and I never thought that like the I never thought that the Lord would really call me to a work like this. Absolutely not. I, I would have said, no, I'm not the one he would choose. I'm not the one. Me, I'm too shy. But God just broke all of that off. <laughs> you know so totally i mean and you know i was just waiting i felt like i was waiting for so long uh for you know god to put me where i fit but once he did it he just accelerated everything so even though there was that time of waiting now it's just like off to the races <laughs> yeah yeah it, it exploded within you i remember when you first came and all of you when you came first came, you kind of tiptoe in at the convert <laughs> Right, everybody knew me for sure about that. But you kind of, you kind of, you, you kind of tiptoe in. Okay, what can I do? Uh, you know, is there freedom? What's going to happen? I, I they think I'm going crazy if I step out. And I, I remember watching Sarah when she came in. She sat in the back. She had her flute, and then all of a sudden she started playing. Then she came up a little bit closer and a little bit closer. I said, "No, keep going, keep going, keep going." And she did. And you know, and uh, and you started to, to play and, and your mom and dad were with you at the time too. And they're, they're pastors and they came up and they're playing on the keyboard, but you really, you know, began to um, feel a confidence or by a drawing. Did, would you say everybody that we feel the drawing of the Lord that in that there's such a drawing, like he's welcoming you. Yeah. Come on, come on, come that on. It's just like pulling me to the altar to just minister to speak just pulling me um you know and i guess yeah like i i did sit in the back because i was you know you're nervous but yeah. uh there was such like the lord's love was just so all over me and I, all i wanted to do was minister uh at the altar that's all i wanted to do 
he worshiped and you, and everybody did everybody worshiped and then picked up instruments and then flags and then all of a sudden you started speaking and i remember each one of when you started speaking it's like the authority that you were speaking with how many of you can identify that that you never spoken like that before what was coming out of your mouth was so different right and so powerful and you know like like you were burning like like it's like you does that make sense yeah totally that, yeah you did that too yeah I, I remember one of the meetings you just you just let it rip <laughs> yeah yeah i did because you know just that whole night was was awesome but i think just what came out of me was that discontentment with where you know we've been where i had been with the lord and just that hunger that is so hungry that would just scream because i didn't want to stay i didn't want to stay there um i never want to stay there i don't want to stay stationary so that was just the byproduct mm -hmm. of my um of of all that discontentment and and you've changed everyone's every one of us has changed and i'm going to go over to ethan and kelly a little bit because i remember when you came to plymouth and uh yeah that's right pastor von that she she roared <laughs> she definitely roared and she you know and they, there has been the release through these convergences of the roar of the lord because you know in, in revelations chapter five it says who's worthy to open the scroll you take the scroll and break the seals they said look you know the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david he's worthy so there's a roaring that war trumpet voice is really being really being heard and being changed in us and we're changing and as i go over to kelly and ethan the one thing i want everybody to get a hold of it didn't stop after convergence did it that's the amazing part right it's last and it increases it's not like a conference that you may eat that have the notes and two weeks later it's, it's it's we're not two week excuse me two week wonders it lasts for two weeks and then we go back it changed you would you agree and it, it's changed your life Kelly Nathan, you came up to to Plymouth and you had heard about it from uh, um, obviously from uh, uh, Jared and Amber and and you came and you know and I'm sure like many like you know not sure what to expect but man I, I know you both and I think it has profoundly changed your life would would that be a correct term and you guys can share from there yeah yeah that, that's that's 100 percent true yeah we we definitely will never be the same um <clears throat> yeah i mean it, i think you know you know at the start of the broadcast you know you, you talked about you know this not being a movement but this being you know the reality you know this really is a true reality of, of god and that was really one of my heart cries you know in leading up to plymouth even before even knowing about the convergence was just really wanting the reality of god in my life you know because i mean like you know, you go to a church service and, you know, it's, it's really a hit or miss, you know, with, with what you experienced there. Um, and, but there, and even with what you experienced, there still just wasn't like, it was like you, you, you felt satisfied, but like, it just, it, it, you, it didn't last. Like there just wasn't a lasting effect. And, and what I've, what I've come to experience, you know, with the convergence is that it's it, like, you just, like we just said, you know, it, it isn't just you know, when we go to the cities, it's an everlasting change. It's a continuous move, you know, continuous reality that we walk in each and every day. Um, and so it, it, it really is incredible. And just when we, you know, when we came to Plymouth, you know, that was, that was the reality. I didn't even realize that this was the reality, like initially, like, I mean, it, it, it definitely, there was a tug for sure. Like, you know, when we were, when we heard the testimonial video about Colorado, you know, we definitely felt like God is calling us to go there. Um, we didn't really know exactly why necessarily, but we just knew that God was like, okay, like, I want you to go there. And we're like, okay. And, and so we, we, we go and, and, and man, you know, God just showed up so powerfully. I mean, the freedom was just so instantaneous. Like there wasn't like this, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, just because it was our first one, you know, I mean, there, there was that initial tiptoeing in this, you know, just to like kind of feel it out. But like, it, it didn't take long to just realize like, wow, like this is like, we can, we can be free here. We, we can really just we can really truly dive in like we don't have to you know swim in the shallow and we can truly dive into the deep to the depths and, and really go you know, full on with the lord and, and and man he just produced so much um in in just those six days like and, it, and it's been very it's been life-changing um so yeah
Absolutely. And um, getting knitted with uh, this body of believers here, um, who's now called Team Converge, um, that has been probably the, one of the most life-changing things. Um, the love that I experience with every one of you and others who are part of it who aren't on tonight, um, that it's amazing. Just it, it's so it was so instantaneous. The love that I experienced with all of you and um, Pastor Henry and Pastor Donna and um, some of the other elders and fivefold ministers who have come as well just expressed so much love that um, it, they and they were so approachable as well. Um, I had an experience that through many pastors or leaders in the past, um, it just seemed like there is kind of a wall between me and the pastors and but it, I just felt so supported and like they the elders and pastors really wanted wanted me to grow and like really cared about where I was with God and um, things that they could see by the spirit, some things that I still needed to grow in and they were able to like call that out and like help. And um, yeah, that it's just been awesome for that reason. Just that, I think that's one of the things that has caused the most change in my life is just the, the investment of these relationships into me. And then um, the motive, the motivation of the Holy spirit within me to love, all of you and um, to be praying for all of you as well. And the amazing thing that those of you that are watching is that uh, Kelly mentioned Team Converge and we have a deployment team, you know, maybe nine, 10, 11 people that have come that are willing to go to the cities as God leads them. But the amazing thing is people who have watched these convergences listen to your testimony have received the same impartation even at their homes you, that the what god has done in your life has touched them and we have a support team we call it the operations team and when does this happen that they see what god is doing in these convergences and they give themselves to pray they give themselves to support help you know like a network of support team like like in the military you have to have the support team to send out the the warriors and this is not something that we built or we even tried to build god just began to touch people through your testimonies through the broadcast that you know we during the day and they're hungry and thirsty and all of a sudden you know they meant it because of COVID. they may not be able to come but they were touched they became part of the prayer team we have people that pray at home they pray through the convergences they're worshiping they join in with us we had a couple i remember one time we were at the monument over in uh in, in Plymouth and we we're waving the flags and one of the sisters that was home, she's got her flag out. She's showing us her picture. She's gone along right with us. And, and that happened in San Francisco too. And, you know, uh, uh, Ethan and, and Kelly were able to, uh, you know, to play, uh, play the guitar. He stepped out into, you know, he's really stepped out into his guitar and, 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 and Kelly sings and plays the keyboard and flags. And, and even though you are home for that convergence, you were right there with it. You know, it wasn't, that was pretty neat. I mean, you know, Am I right? You want to talk about that a little bit, how God used you? A absolutely. Yeah, it, it truly was a remarkable thing to just really tap into the connection in the spirit. Like you, uh, you know, it, it really, we really felt like we were there, even though we weren't physically there. And, um, <clears throat> and, and, and just really just the, you know, the, the grace to, to even be able to even do that. Like, I mean, like, you know, what, what setting, you know, would you, you know, ever be allowed to, you know, chime in online and Zoom, you know, in the midst of a, an active gathering, you know, it's like, I mean, what, you know, how, how graceful of God to even allow such a thing to even be. And so, yeah, so, I mean, I mean, I mean, just, just to, you know, off the you know, get go, you know, really just to encourage you, I mean, if, if you aren't able to actually physically come with us, I mean, you, you, there's so other, many other ways that you can really connect with us and just, and be just as much a part uh, of the deployment team that goes. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it was a remarkable experience to be able to release different songs and prophetic, um, you know, worship, uh, different things that the God had us do, you know, just in our home. Um, it, it was really like a, it really was just a, a unique dynamic, you know, because, you know, our experience before the San Francisco bridge was we, we were on the, you know, we would go and then come back home, but it was like, we, we were able to have a little mini convergence in our own home. And so that was a, that was a cool thing too to experience. Um, and, and yeah, and God did su such powerful things 
and we just there, there wasn't a disconnect in any way you know you know from being um from being a you know online so it was really cool how god knitted it fitted us together in that regard yeah one example of that is um i started waving the flags towards the west um we live here in iowa and um and then uh, I was I found myself waving the flags really high up. Um, I have we have two flags that are like flame looking flags, um, and um, it was this this happened. I was doing this about ten minutes before others on the team who were there in San Francisco they had gotten revelation that God was building a canopy of love over mm -hmm. there in San Francisco. And at that moment, I got revelation as to why I was waving the flags this way, like really high up. I've never waved them like that before. So that was just one example of the connection that happened. Even when we were so far away, we mm -hmm. were just right in sync with what the Holy Spirit was doing in San Francisco. I think that is so beautiful because, you know, when we talk about through the convergences where God knits our hearts together, they are truly in love bond relationships. And though we may not be able to be physically together, but we are spiritually together and the connection by god only god we didn't even know each other you know six months ago none of us knew each other i knew sarah and i knew jay but other than that most of the people that were connected with were like even with uh, uh you know our sister cheryl up in canada and sister patricia up in canada you know and and and, and pastor devin and different people and that were being connected with by god and bringing together who would have ever thought god would bring people together for one purpose of seeking his face him being the agenda and people being willing to pray for us, be part of it, pray for that region that we're going to, the people that we're going to. There's a lot of work that God does before we get there to prepare, you know, to, to, to prepare us to go and prepare the spiritual atmosphere there to go with. And to find a pastor in Mauritius praying for Schenectady, New York, or a bishop in Philadelphia praying for us in New York. And when, when she came out, uh, Bishop Ross and her, her assistant, uh, uh, Dr. Polly, I mean, she looked at the group and they have they they watch over 20 something churches, you know, and, you know, they, and they have much responsibilities. And to hear them come to say, we are here to serve the Lord in you. We are not here for a place. And they were so used differently and so powerfully. They had a place and they functioned differently. I'm going to go to you with Jay. Jay, just uh, maybe you can testify about what you saw differently about the FIFO ministries of this of, of, of what guys yeah. do versus what we're used to. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah, it's it's just such an awesome thing to see when God is the one that's leading it. Because, um, you know, what did Jesus say? You know, to to be the greatest, you have to become like the least. You know, and really, I, what I've seen is the Lord has to work this in each one of us. Is is this nature of becoming like a child, becoming like the least of these, and laying your life down? Like that is. I think a marker of the kingdom. I think in the church age, it was kind of like the world where you have to build your credit and you have to, you know, kind of earn your way to the top. And then you have like this top down approach. But in the kingdom, I've seen how the fivefold ministers are laying their lives down. They're getting underneath. They're laying a foundation so they can lift others up and bring others to the Lord. And I just, it was just so cool to see, um, uh, to see these fivefold ministers enter into this work with us and just say whatever you need. Like, we'll just pray. We'll just be in the background. We'll literally just in a room by themselves praying while we go out, you know, and, and get the glory or get to experience it all, you know. But they're like, they're content just serving, just ministering, just um, whatever it is that, that the Lord is calling them to do. That's that's the key. It's just like whatever, God, you want us to do. It's a life laid down. It's a life poured out. And it's just a different function because it's a willingness, Lord, it's, a, you know, to, before the Lord to take a back seat, to take the lowest place and say, God, wherever I'm needed, Lord, to see your mission, to see your kingdom come. Like, and that's, I think that's the heart that he's looking for in this work. You know, I remember in Plymouth, Pastor Charlie and, uh, and, and, and your mom, Pastor Yvonne came out. And I remember them looking at me, we're just here to serve whatever you want us to do, you know? And in what I had witnessed in many churches is that it's to preach. You know, that when you get ministers together, they got that itch to preach and itch to minister, you know, and you see it even at different conferences that they, I've got to give you my revelation, you know, whatever it is, you know, I'm not saying that's bad. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that there's just a need to minister. But what I saw in Pastor Charlie and Yvonne, I saw in Pastor John and Lori, you know, Bishop Ross and Minister Polly, you know, and some of the other ministers that God has joined with us, there was none of that. That doesn't make them better. 
but they, they were there to be part, connected with you and with God together. They didn't see their title. They didn't see their position. They didn't want everybody to clear out the room because they walked in, you know. They were just God's people. They were just people like you and I. But, that, but they carried that gift and that presence from God that everyone could recognize and all of us need. And so there was a reverence in the right way of that gift so that when they spoke, there was an opening for you that, to open your hearts to receive what they had to say differently. They ministered differently. They prayed over us differently. They talked differently. You know, they encouraged us differently. And at the same time that you had space to minister back. And to, and, and, to, and to give back. And they didn't say, who are you? Don't you know that I'm Bishop so-and-so, that I'm pastor and so-and-so? No, they received from the Spirit of God in you. And their testimony is that we were so blessed by your team. We were so blessed by these people that they, to see them grow, to see them minister. And they were their testimony is how blessed they were. You know. And if you notice, everybody who's watching this, this wasn't a one-man show. It was the body of Christ working. I long to see this day. I've waited 35 years to see this day. People have waited a lot longer than me to see where we would be one body, one family, each part supplying with the other. And the fivefold ministers having their place, you know, and, 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 and received in the way that they're supposed to be because they stepped in between that cornerstone of Jesus and that finishing stone and they laid themselves down, you know, and they were ready to pour out their lives as a drink offering to see your lives be lifted up in the Lord. And we all drank from that. We all received from it. But also being part of my generation, we were open and ready to receive from what God has revealed in you. And usually that doesn't happen. But every one of those ministers received the revelation of God within you. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And it, wouldn't you agree? To me, it's the way it's supposed to work. You know, and so, you know, we didn't know all of that was going to happen. You know, we had we had apostles and prophets from the marketplace that are came in the meetings and they brought a completely different perspective of the Lord in there. Donna and I ministered differently. Donna, with her scribing and, and, and worship and singing, you know, we were just part of everyone else. You know, we were just joining in, you know, uh, with everyone. And, you know, and when uh, Ethan got those new songs and began to sing out those new songs that we recorded and Jay and, 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 and Sarah playing the flute and the, and the flags, I have never seen such a harmony of music, flags, dancers, ministry, you know, scribing, all of it functioned just like it did in David's tabernacle. And man, how was that for you guys to see that in operation? And, 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 and why the people in New York, if they're watching tonight, why would this be something that, that they that that you would encourage them to come to participate in because they can bring their instruments they can bring their 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 arts like jeremy who's on tonight nicole he he drew i mean he drew pictures that was so prophetic right it was awesome and we want to go ahead yeah i i mean it it is so encouraging just to know that that god truly made us all to worship and you know and worship really has been, you know, for the longest time compartmentalized and has been formatted and has been, you know, it's like there was like a specific, like you had to have a specific style or a specific way it was supposed to sound. Um, but it's just in these convergences, it's, it, it just, everything just blends. And, and, and it, it really, it's like, we're truly playing heavenly music. And I'm not trying to bash all the songs that are, that are out there and are existing, but there's just something different. There's just a new realm, a new, um, you know, a new place that we enter in when we just, when we just, come with just the pure, you know, the pure heart, love, worship. Um, and, and it, and it is so fascinating just to, you know, just to not only be, a, you know, a musician myself, but just also witness it with my own eyes. You know, you really, you really become in uh, contact, you know, in connection with God's heart, you know, for what, for what sounds to even, you know, generate. Like, I mean, I remember in Plymouth, for example, it was, you know, the temptation is just, you know, just to go right along. But it was like, I, I even got to a point where it was like, I, I didn't know even know what to play just because of how strong God's heart was in that moment. I, it was like, I, it was like, I, I came into this place where it was like, God, I don't even know what to play for you right now, just because of how strong and just how like how in awe I am of you. Um, but, but I just, I only bring that point up just to just be like, you know, the, the pure whole worship gets unlocked in you. 
in, at these conversions. Like you really, there really is an unlocking that happens, and and you don't, and you may not even realize you even have it until you until you're actually in the presence of it. Um, and so, like in going in, you know, for example, one for me, you know, I was you know sort of self conscious a little bit. I was a little insecure about you know, well, I'm not that good at playing guitar. You know, I don't I only know a few chords here and there, but like. But it was just something just unlocked where it was like it, it, it was like the poor woman just like, you know, she you know, she only had just a little bit, but she gave all she gave all that she had. And look at how tremendously, you know, an act of worship that was. And it was just so I just say, like, you know, just like, you know, the you know, it doesn't matter, you know, how much quantity wise you have. It's just the quality of, of, of what you have. And if, if all you have is a little bit of that, God will definitely unlock that and allow that to just pour out onto him and, and create something so beautiful. And so it, it truly, it's it, it just, ah, it, it's, so, it's so awesome just to be a part of that and witness that. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We're actually feeding the Lord that will pure holy worship. Cause that's when, 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 when he says, I'll come in and sup with you. Well, when somebody comes in for dinner, you feed them. And so we really feed the Lord. If you want to look at it that way, we really, feed him the worship that he deserves and we have the freedom right we have the place to pour on his feet we don't have a time limit you know you're able to give god that pure worship mm -hmm. and it's like the deeper you're able to worship him the more he comes you know i think of build the dreams if you build it he'll come you know you know he'll come if you build it and that's kind of what i felt like if you will pour your heart of worship he's going to come and meet with you in such a a supping and intimacy that that when you play your instrument, you can't play it the same. When you pick up the flag, you can't wave it the same. When you dance, you can't dance the same. When you begin to, to go back in the room and, you know, maybe you're jumping, you don't do it the same way. It's just something totally different, right? Would you agree with me, everyone, that that's what you experience? It's like, it's like in a different dimension, but it is so pleasing to the Lord. How would you say that? How would you sum it up, Sarah? I'll go to you next. Yeah, so... Well, one thing I was thinking about how every every time I've gone to a convergence, I've played my flute differently, and that was not planned in like at all. I didn't know God was going to do that, um, and it's like each convergence, God like takes it up an, a notch mm -hmm. and takes it up another level, and it's just so awesome to see how every time like His glory increases. Um, you know, and what he's doing increases and it's just, oh, it's just, it's never the same. It's never the same. So you never come to a convergence saying, okay, well, it was this way last time. So it's going to be like this, this time. Absolutely not. And I love that because, because you just get to that place where you never know what the Lord is going to do and you never know, you, you don't really know what to expect. So you just lay down all your expectations, you know, b before, you know, before um the last convergence you know i laid my flute down and i said lord like if it doesn't matter if i play this uh once or I, not at all it does not matter lord it's yours so it's and and you know oh gosh i could just go on you know it's just having that heart of just completely laid down and just expecting to be um, expecting the unexpected that's what it is <laughs> yeah. that's beautiful how you said it I, I, i'll go to amber here for a question amber did you ever imagine that flag ministry would be one of your weapons and callings to do <laughs> no no i never i never even picked up a flag <laughs> in my life <laughs> um but yeah i mean in plymouth there i mean there was another sister who had who had picked up a flag and I found myself just kind of mesmerized by what she was doing. And um, she went back and like put those flags away and she didn't roll them up like you would normally when you put them away. She had like laid them out and I had kind of just went on, you know, with the Lord doing my own thing. But I suddenly had a prompting that I needed to go get three specific colors of flags to wave before him. And first of all, that was strange because I'd never even, you know, I'd never even really picked up a flag. So I was like, really, Lord, you want me to pick up a flag? <laughs> but um, I went back to the table and lo and behold, the flags that she had laid out ready to be waved were the very colors that the Lord had showed me. Wow. 
And when I picked up those flags, I was catapulted into a depth of God's heart that I had never experienced before. And I mean, if I could live <laughs> in that place where he brought me of such oneness, I mean, that's where he's bringing us, right? <laughs> so, but um, of such oneness and such intimacy and um, feeling his heart, you know, ex like receiving his mind as I was waving those flags. And, you know, as, um, as Ethan was talking about, you know, unlocking that pure worship, it was like I was stripped bare. I mean, there was no performance in waving those flags when you're one with him. There's no trying to impress anybody. There's no trying to get to the front of the room or something, you know, like you're, that's why it's so different because I'm not, I, you know, at one point it was, it was no longer like I was waving the flags for the Lord. I was waving those flags with him almost, you know, as like he was waving those flags and that is the beauty of when everyone is in that place. The Lord is playing the flute with Sarah. You know, Jay is on the drums with the Lord. Kelly is singing with the Lord. I mean, can you imagine the harmony? That's what we experience in these gatherings. Like the air is buzzing. I mean, it, literally the, the very air around us is thick and saturated with heaven. I mean, Jesus is, is moving. We're literally seeing Jesus move through our brothers and sisters and we're feeling him rise within ourselves. And so this is the ministry of, um, of worship to the Lord and the way that he, that he reveals himself is so much deeper. It's, it's so unhindered and unashamed. I hope Margie's watching. <laughs> it's so unhindered and there's no shame. And, and just to encourage anyone listening to this testimony, that isn't something that we try to do. You know, I don't try to remove hindrances. I don't try. I don't, I'm not battling shame so much. You know, the Lord is coming upon us <laughs> and arising within us. And that is a work, that unlocking of that pure worship, that's a work that he does. He begins to break us free of everything that's hindered. That was Sarah's testimony of, you know, he unlocked her. Yeah. And then it's heart to heart, face to face mm -hmm. of just intimate, deep worship. And so just be encouraged that if you come with a willing heart to love the Lord, he will draw you in, he will sweep you up and you will experience him like you've never experienced before. So there's no, you know, the apprehension is normal, but you can be so expectant that the Lord is going to embrace you in his safety. You're going to be so secured in his love and find yourself expressing yourself in ways that you didn't even know were in you, you know, like the flags for me. And, and I will say that um, this, maybe somebody out there will relate to this as, as I've worshiped the Lord in my room, even like I've explored dancing with him and even, even by myself, sometimes I can be apprehensive about how do I express myself to you in fullness? You know, how, what does that look like? I don't, you know, you have, so these things are in us, you know, the, those stirrings to, to offer ourselves to him in, in the totality of our beings, you know, those desires are in us. And when we're in his love and we're in this environment of safety with one another, there's that opportunity for everything that he's put in you to come out and expand and increase. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It really is. And, you know, one of the things that, um, from that, and join in as you want here, but um, if we come to that place where he's received that worship, you know, we're dwelling in it. He's dwelling in us and something happens. We begin, he begins to share the secrets and the mysteries of his desires for us, 
for his people, and for the area. He begins to show us his heart because we're in a place where he can trust us. I believe we come to a place of being trusted where he wants to begin to show us our families, you know, maybe our churches, our ministries, and they've been dramatically impacted by it, dramatically impacted because the Lord would have us bring those things before him. Not, we're not saying, Lord, please take care of this. Lord, take care of this. He's showing us. Is that He shows us his heart. He shows us his desires. He shows us what he wants to show us for that gathering that's important to him. And there's such a specialness that he would even share that with you and allow you to be part of it, whether it be prayer, whether it be to, to release whatever he wants in a city, a region, or for our families. I mean, there's been times where, I mean, we're on our faces for our families. Like you could not even imagine. And this wasn't the, let's pray for our families now. No, it was the Lord, right? Call, crying out the deep within us, crying out to the deep for him, that intercession, that travailing of, of, of that he knows the needs of your mother, your father, your sister, and your brother. And, you know, and there was, and he took us right into that place where he wanted to do something about it now. And, you know, and we were, we began to see from a completely different perspective with authority and, 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 you know, and, and so things got to be begin to declare. This is not the declare and decree like we do in the church age, you know, where I declare and decree this, I declare. No, God speaks through you, Jerry, right? He speaks through you with a mighty thundering voice and he begins to announce what he wants to do, which is, I think, pretty powerful, you know, and, and I don't know if we're ready to hear that voice of the Lord, you know, uttering before his army, but when it does, it changes and it electrifies the atmosphere. And all of a sudden, as worshipers, we become warriors, worshiping warriors. And I'm going to go to Jared because, Jared, God gave you something about preparing for this, this convergence coming up in New York. I'm going to spend the last part of this part of really focusing a little bit on New York. Some, and we, that, But you got a word today that God was telling you about preparation for, for this. Do you want to share that, brother? Yeah. Um, uh, the Lord... I just dropped it in my spirit uh, the other day when I was praying and, you know, it was just kind of just um, I find myself uh, continually going to the place of like, God, what are you saying? Like, what is, you know, what is the big picture? And, and, you know, he brought me to, to Joel 2, 1, where the Lord is blowing the trumpet on the Mount of Zion and who will hear his call. Mm. And, you know, in there, it also talks about the, the day of the Lord. And it says the, the day of the Lord is uh, uh, gloomy and dark, I believe. And and so we, we know that's ahead of us. And uh, there is a there's a call for preparation. And the Lord is asking, he's asking us, you know, do you want to be prepared for what's ahead? Um, do you care to be prepared for what's ahead? Um, do you want to be a part of my overcoming army? Do you, um, you know, the end, the end time army, the end time army that talks about in, in Joel uh, uh, chapter two. And so there is a cost to that. It, it doesn't come easy, um, but God is, um, he, he's laying the groundwork, you know, to get prepared. And so he just, he just needs a yes. And so uh, coming to the convergence, um, that is a very unique preparation because uh, we only see in part and we need all of the parts of the body. And so it, when we come into a convergence, when you, when you step into David's tabernacle, um, all the different facets of God are there and, and, and more to come. And, so you can't be prepared just you and the Lord in your closet. You need you you need to come together, and so God is He wants to bring us together as a body, and uh, we have to come to unite. We have to walk in we have to walk in unity, and we have to get aligned with the Lord for what's to come. And um, it's just such an hour of of visitation, and. Uh, no cost is too great for him. And um, he really is blowing that trumpet and saying, you know, who who will hear the call of the Lord? And um, who is willing for their life to be interrupted? You know, who is willing to have, who is willing to be formed and then put into formation, you know, to form that wheel within a wheel? You know, and that's not, e and that's not easy. That, that, that can be painful. It requires a greater death to self, but so that you can live. 
you know, so that we can experience the Lord's victory on this earth and uh, experience the rule and reign with him. That was awesome. Um, I'm going to go over to Jay here for a minute. And, um, you know, uh, Jay, when you look at New York and you look at the the people that you know, the state of the church in there, and then this is not to judge that the people are, are you right. know, I'm just about, you know, why would God want us to come to New York at this time in the season and say, say, I want to meet you there as the breath of life, you know, because we're coming to meet with him. And I've said this and I'll say it publicly on air. If all we go there to do is to worship him and it satisfies his heart and right. nothing else happens, I'm content. I don't have to see anything. Nothing has to happen. If we're just coming because he wants us there and just to bless him and minister, I'm satisfied with that. Now, I know he does beyond that, but, you know, we're, we're not coming up there, Jay, and you know this. We're not coming up there to do a ministry. We're not right. coming to do meetings. We're not being invited by a church to come up and, you know, and minister in the church. We, we have an invitation to come and meet with God. Jay, why would God say that now to Schenectady, to your area? Why would you think, in your own opinion, you know, do you think that's like, why is the Lord saying that and why is he doing that now? From what you see and what you know, hmm. I think uh, this, from what I've seen, experienced, and you know, growing up here, it's there's definitely a a heaviness and a and a darkness in this region. Some real entrenched things here, and it's even you know it's crept its way into the church, and I see it how it's it's caused a discouragement and despair, a hopelessness in the people, and especially the young people. You know, you hear Sarah's testimony, and you see like where she was at and just like the, the hunger for something more just for a glimmer of hope. And I think there's just been so much darkness. People just, they think it's just, it's just about holding on till the end, till we can get out of here. And um, those that are, that do still have a fire in them, they just, they don't know where to go or what to do. And there's just such, we're just so disjointed. There's just so many things in operation here that, um, there's there can be just a bit of discouragement hopelessness and just like like god what do we do what are we doing wrong and i i just see the lord extending his hand in this invitation saying let me show you you know let me take you up here let me bring you to a higher place you know let me breathe life into you and, and show you who you are and why i made you and and how you can function in this and and breathe on those dry bones you know we we've experienced the dryness and it's just like this dryness within us is just crying out like lord can we live, you know, can we live here? And, and, and God is like, let me breathe on you. Let me bring these dry bones together and put flesh on them and, and breathe life into them and make them into a mighty army. And, uh, I, I just, I, I see the Lord and just, you know, even in that, like Isaiah 61 ministry, you know, to bind up the brokenhearted and set at liberty, the captives, like the Lord wants to, to breathe his life and, and bring restoration and healing to these, this people here in this region, because, Oftentimes, God will take those places of just of, of brokenness and despair and say, watch what I can do, you know, watch what I can do with with nothing, you know, with brokenness, with these areas that it looks like the enemy's won. It looks like the enemy has the final say. And God's like, actually, I, I have the final say. Watch what I'm going to do with this people here. So I, I'm excited for what God has in store uh, for this region. You know, Jay, and, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, you you're around a lot of your generation yeah. you know, and you know, there is something that they're looking for. Sarah kind of identified it a little bit and what would happen to those people if, so, if, if something different wasn't done, what, 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 what do you see if they, if, if they can't find that was your yeah. people, what do you think would happen? I mean, I think, a lot of what we're seeing happen is is just they they close themselves off into their own little worlds you know they you know they they'll find friends and they'll they'll you know they'll form groups and i you know i went to a tech school where everybody goes into these virtual worlds and they, they just check out and they'll say we're going to create a world where we can function and where we can have something you know and and even in ministry it's like we're going to form our own groups you know and try to figure it out on our own you know but it's it's fatherless it's motherless you know it's you know, it's these these gangs that we form, you know, these ki roaming kids trying to find the Lord and they don't know how, you know, and there's just 
they they'll turn to other things where they'll just get discouraged and and check out you know i've just seen so many walk away so it's there's just there's just such a hunger but it's just if they if they're never shown it's like you know who knows what would happen but but praise god that he's making a way for them i think as we start sharing about new york i've gotten a sense that there there's a real drawing you know to to, to see god our father as the breath of life yeah you know and if you listen to the, the that song that i put out the other day the um the uh, uh the four the four winds um it was like I was able to see how the Lord formed Adam he, he took dust, and I actually got to see it in a vision where, you know, how can dust make a form because there's nothing to hold it together. If you think about it, you can't mold dust into anything. It doesn't have the substance of it to form anything, showing you the creator God that can take nothing that should ever stick together and make it stick. And he formed Adam from the dust in his likeness and an image. But it was, but Adam couldn't become alive and be who he was or created, you know, until God breathed in him. And I saw that. And as I saw the Lord breathe in him, the next scene I saw was Jesus. And I saw his dead body in that cave and the father exactly coming down and breathing that life in him. And he, and he rose up from the dead. And then I was taken over to Romans chapter eight. And I think this is a real word for New York and the same spirit that breath of life, that, that word actually means breath of life. Spirit means that, and if you look mm -hmm. in the right, it means breath of life. Mm -hmm. That same breath of life that raised up Jesus from the dead is going to quicken those mortal bodies. And I'm going to bounce up to Sarah here for a minute, because when I read your testimony today, which was so, so beautiful about that, I was just searching for a place. And without that place of where the Lord is made for you, you die. You know, you dry up, you know, and so there's like a spiritual death. Even you may go to church, you may go to all the meetings, you may do it, but you're, there's still a death because it's not the place. You know, there is a place for you to be what God created you to be. And that's not just, and I'm not talking about just sitting in the church. You know, there's a place for you in a church. Of course, there's a place for you in a church. But but our the church's idea of place and placement is so different and God's idea of place and placement. And would you say that, you know, though, you know, you've been to churches, you've been to meetings, you did all those things. And you said it was OK, but you said I didn't find my place, which really means I didn't find my placement. Why is that so important to your generation right now? Why do you see that this is so important that they begin to experience what you're experiencing? Well, it was important for me because of I just wasn't satisfied anywhere else and I think that my generation is a generation that is has been left completely unsatisfied like they have everything at their fingertips but yet they are so hungry even if they don't know God they're so, they're hungry like they, they they don't know who God is but but they want something more and they try to get something more from friends, from TV shows, from and any anything to fill themselves. And I just I think that the only way that you can really be satisfied um, is is when you're in the right placement of of God being with God walking with God and that's what my generation needs because nothing else works no, nothing else works because and maybe other people can get away with that but I know that God made our generation to seek him they made he made us different he made us different he did and he gave us so many, he gave all, oh, they were so creative and different. And all of that was supposed to be for him. It wasn't supposed to be for the world. It wasn't supposed to be for, uh, to put on a show. It wasn't to be lifted up by other people. It was for him. So, I mean, it's just the fact that we were made for him and him alone. And because of that, nothing else will fit we we it, it just will not work and 
you know, even if you, you can try as hard as you can, and I surely have, and, um, but you know what? The Lord did not let me, the Lord did not let me stay there. And I don't think he's going to let the rest of my generation stay there because he's so jealous over them. And he wants to give them everything their heart is desiring, like their place their place in him and not their place in the world because this world is going to pass away. It's their place in him, you know, where they're safe, where they don't have to make anyone love them, where, you know, because of this, we're also a generation that, you know, is so desperate for the father's love mm-hmm. and so desperate to be loved. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you can see it in them, you know, trying to get all the love from everywhere else. Um, and it's just, oh, it's just, it can only be satisfied by him and walking with him and being put in the place of just knowing him and following him. And then, and then he'll put you in the right place to worship you and to worship him and put you in the right place with other believers. And for me, it's been the greatest uh, joy in my life. I've never been this happy. <laughs> I've never been this happy and this blessed in my life um there's been you know there's no comparison um to what god has done in my life there is i know there's absolutely nothing uh that would satisfy me or anything but just being uh with him and growing with him and with you guys by tears to my eyes i'm telling you just that i was overwhelmed with the lord while you're talking because What's different, what God is doing, is he has truly set a table. And if you go to a wedding, there's a place with your name on it that only you can sit at. And you are welcomed at that table. You're not just coming to sit in the back row. You're coming to the table of the Lord that he himself has made for you. The place where you fit. The place that you function, the place that you become alive because you're sitting at his table and his banner over us is love. We come to his banquet and table and his banner over us is love. And as we come into that place that Jesus has made in my father's house, there are many dwelling places and I've gone and I made a place for you. That's what he said. I go and I made a place for you and I'm going to come back. And that's what he's done. He's come back so that so that I can take you with me so that where I am, you shall also be. And in that place of being one with him and married with him and in that place, you grow and you become what God created you, the joy, the peace, the righteousness, the love, all that we were created for comes by placement. And there's no place in the old structure for everyone to fit. And that's what God is truly trying to share with us, teach us that in the convergence, I made a place for you, Sarah Spitlick. This is your place. This is my place with you, your place with me, Kelly and Ethan. This is your place with me and my place with you. And right next to you is going to be Jay Bernardo. And right next to them is going to be Ethan and it's going to be and Jared and, 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 and Amber and all those that come. And no one's trying to take another person's place because it's not theirs. And we don't have to fight over it. We don't have to fight. We just function. When we get in the place of God, we just begin to function because the creator God is now with us and we're with him the way we were created to be. And that expression of his life is able to manifest in our lives. And as it does, it builds Sarah and it builds all of us together in ways I have never seen and experienced in 35 years. Have I ever seen God make a resting place? You know? He's 
given us a place to enter into his rest that is reserved with you and it has your name on it. I know people laugh at the convergences. I know they don't see it at a big meeting. Other people are gathering thousands and they're singing and they're praising. God bless them for what they're doing. But this is an individual place, an invitation of God for you to come and be with the one who made you, the one that created you, the one that gave his life for you, the one that wants to marry you so that you really enter into the marriage supper of the lamb and become one with him. And from that place, you don't have to worry about what the rest of your life is going to look like. You don't have to fight up the totem pole to find a position in the church. You don't have to have a ministry. You don't have to try to be a minister. You become one. You become the very thing that everybody's fighting over. And it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God. I don't have to have a ministry. I become one. You don't have to have a ministry. You became a ministry. Everything that God showed you, everything that God spoke about you comes into existence because you're planted in the right soil at the right time with the right people so that you can begin to function in the beauty of his holiness. And can you imagine the heart of God to see Sarah come and sit in her place? Can you imagine the light that she's going to shine to her generation? And when Jay comes into his place and Ethan and, and, and Kelly and, and, and Jared and Amber to the young generation that's rising up as mothers and fathers and me and Lynn and Donna and our age generation. Can you imagine when we're all in our placement by God? It's God that arranges the body parts and puts them together as he wills. This is not us trying to make anything or fit anything. We're just being fitted and knitted by the very hand of God and be connected by God because I found my place and I may be a finger, but I found the other fingers on the hand. God put me with the right place. And in a convergence, we come into the alignment of God. Yes. I don't mean to get so emotional, but I'm just overwhelmed. Amen. I'm overwhelmed that our God loves us that much to sit. Can you imagine sitting at that table? That's the picture I got when you were saying it, Sarah. I saw the picture of that wedding table. And if you ever go to a wedding and they got those little name markers on there, that's your seat. Isn't that just like God to put your name on that seat, Kelly, and you to put your name on there and invite you to come to that place? No one else can sit there because it has your name on there. But the boy next to you has their name on there. And what's the difference between you're all invited, you're all the same, you're all guests or being married to the bridegroom? There's no competition. There's no strife. There's no division. There's no big people, no little people, because we're there to be married to the king, every one of us. Man, guys, share. Go ahead and share. I'm gonna go get a paper towel here for a minute, but Kleenex. Go ahead, you share. Somebody, somebody talk while I go get that. Man, yeah. I mean, I think you know, you know, with you know, with the you know, this generation, you know, I, I when I was listening to you, you know, talk, Sarah, like I think the key word that I was hearing was that there's just such a desperation um, for this generation. Like they're yeah. so, it, it's like they didn't come into this world with like like there was this like sense of like ease to like, you know, they, they can like navigate and try, but it was like, it was like, there's just been so much that's been already shaken at this point in time that there had, there's like naturally just a desperation that has been created for this generation to try and, and find their place. And, and so I just, and I mean, it is, it's unfortunate. It's sad that, you know, that, 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 that desperation is, is really, a, I mean, it, I almost, it's a true desperation but it's unfortunately, it's just, it's like, you know, the enemy has been so, um, you know, you know, fighting the, against this generation to really try to create so much counterfeit and, and so much, um, you know, obstacles to really try to hinder this generation. And, um, you know, one of the things that I was really, you know, when I was thinking about New York, um, and if it, this is okay for me to, to speak about something I was seeing about New York and Pastor Henry, but like, I was just seeing that there's been such a lukewarmness that's been over this area that I believe that God is really just going to come in. And there's going to be, uh, I was just hearing that, um, that there's a fire that's going to come over this generation that is going to manifest and that it's never going to burn out. Like I just really see this, this, this endless fire that's not going to ever be quenched anymore. Um, yeah. that it's going to continue to consume and consume and consume and consume and consume. And they're going to know their place. They're going to know their position. They're going to know exactly who God made them to be. And I was just seeing like, almost like stadium full of like, people that are in that area and it was just like everyone had like a roar of a lion just beating out of their chest just because of just how much fire was in them that god placed in them 
And so I really believe that God is going to absolutely obliterate that lukewarm spirit that has been over that area for so long that has kept the kept people so buried and hindered. And and so I, I believe that God's just going to come in roaring like a lion in this area. So yeah, when you said that, Jay, you can bear witness to the accuracy of, of what he's saying or not, but yeah. I see it as more of a complacency. You know, this it, that because that's what that produces a complacency. Yes. This is how it's gonna be, you know, and and that you talked about the hopelessness being stolen from them. You mm. know, and I think that when you're when when that hope is stolen from you and th that you can't see a better day. You know, that's when we become, if you want to use the term lukewarm, because yeah. we lost the fire. We're yeah. not hot or cold. We're not anywhere. Right. You know? And so, the, the, so there's, why would the Lord Jay want to come as a breath of the breath of life? What, did, what is he going to breathe on? Well, there has to be a fire somewhere, right? Right. The death that has to be unburied. Right. So you, you live there. So tell us what, does that bear witness to you with, with what you just heard? Yeah, I think it's kind of like this survive mentality, you know, the frozen chosen is just like, you know, it's just, it's so cold in more ways than one. It's just like, we're just going to hold on until we can, you know, till we can make it. And it's like, it's, it has nothing to do with thriving. It's just surviving. But the Lord is saying, I, I want you to thrive. I want you to know that I, I made you for more than this, you know, and it's not just some distant thing. It's now, you know, there's something present now. Yeah. And, um, but it has like, it's like, it's something has blinded the eyes to say, okay, I just, you know, I'm just going to get by i'm just gonna work this job or whatever it is you know those those things in luke 14 like just go through life and just try to make it you know just try to and it's like the the it, it buries that fire deep down inside but there is a remnant there is something that's that's that god is stirring up in his people again and he just he wants to breathe on that and, and consume everything else that has gotten in the way i, I i'm seeing like little fires all throughout that area yes you know that's a, that's a word. You know, you're there but they're yeah. hidden and they're buried, yeah. you know, yes. it's like something over those little fires, you know, and so they're not seen in some places they are being protected for, for, for this hour, but, but that the Lord wants to breathe on those flames. Yes. So, so that they would break out of whatever that is in the spiritual atmosphere, so to speak, so that that flame can become a torch, mm. you know? And, and so like, like when Sarah said, like, when I found my place, that was like God breathing on her. So that which was a match became a torch. And when you guys came to Colorado, that which was a match became a torch. And then when we went to Philadelphia, that torch became a, you know, a, a, a forest on fire, you know, so it, it's, it, it spreads more, yeah. you know, so, so there's something about, um, I think what God wants to manifest there is his absolute love, the absolute desire to come to that burning table of the Lord, that, that table is on fire. And so that we can eat the fire food that he can breathe upon and drink the fire drink that he wants to pour out there. And he's going to blow his breath on everything that we eat and everything that we drink that he feeds us with for an acceleration that I believe is going to be so transforming in our lives. I, I mean, I, I love your testimony. And I think all of you can say this. I, I look back at my picture six months ago and I don't even recognize myself, yeah. you know, and I really believe that's what God wants to do, you know, and this is not a, a um, put down of the churches that they love God, they serve God, they go to church, and yeah. we 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 relate to God to the degree that we know Him. You know, we move with God to the degree we know Him. But sometimes God wants to come. I gotta, I have to expand your limits. I gotta take you beyond what you can see today, yes. and I gotta show you the bigness of who I am. You know, I I, re I remember you know one one meeting I was invited to up in New York, and the Lord was kind of quickening this in me, and. You know, and in, in the in the it was it was called um, uh, burn the fire or burning with a fire or something that I was asked to come and speak at, and you know as I was invited to speak, I, I, a procession was formed. It was real worship, and everybody came out to the came to the cross, and there was like they were all there at the cross, and they were and rightfully so they were honoring God for saving them, mm -hmm. but in the back of the on the altar area was the line of Judah sitting on the throne, and I kept looking at it. And looking at it, and looking at it, and looking at it, and looking at it. And the Lord said, "Go up and hug it." I said, "What?" He said, "Go up and hug that flag." And I said, "Lord, I can't do that. That's going to be very disrupting if I do that right here." He goes, "Go and hug that flag." So I knew enough of the Lord to be able to do it. So I went up, 
you know, and I was one of the guest speakers, you know, so I went up there and I hugged the, the flag and, you know, the, the pastor was gracious. He knows me that God will use me like that sometimes. And he, he uh, shared what he shared and introduced me and I'm still hugging the flag. And, you know, all the worship team left and there was one young person on the keyboard. He said, would you please stay? Would you just stay with me here while he's talking? And when that young man stood, he just started to burn with fire. Mm. I stay, you know, and God just began to manifest in his life. And so, um, so I, so a- afterwards I, you know, when I was introduced, I let go of the flag and I said, it's pretty silly, right? To go up there and hug a flag. I said, and God was pleased that you love him, and that he saved you. But our destination is not the cross. That's the doorway. Our destination is the throne. And I'm here to tell you about the burning fire that will prepare you to be able to enter into the very throne room of God. You know, and I think that that was a real word, you know, because, we, you know, I know New York has experienced yeah. many moves of God, right, Jay? Many, many right. moves of God. But what happens after that, Jay? What, what kind of goes, goes on after that? Mm-hmm. The enemy just takes the dirt, puts it back over, gets us to go back, you know, back into survival mode, go through the motions and business as usual and it's like it never happened yeah and so this time i think for those that are willing that and i think all of you would agree as you know we're going to wrap up here very shortly but as we as we do when you say that we were invited to that banqueting table and we heard the invitation to come and we were fed by the lord himself we ate his flesh and drank his blood literally in real communion communion with the Lord, real intimacy with God. And have we not been changed? Yeah. Are we the same? Mm. No, no. So there's something about coming to that banqueting table. Yeah. There's something about that at that table is your place. And I don't know why this is so important. Maybe somebody else has it, but knowing that God has made you for a purpose, not a work, but a purpose to be his to be loved by him, that he wants to share, Jared, his entire kingdom with you. He wants to share as a bride, everything that he is, all that he has, all that he is, and all he ever will be, he wants to share with us. And he's just asking us to come and sit at that table. And and he's, and he's doing it in a very covert way. Will you hear me? Will you hear that trumpet call? Will you come past your job? Will you come past your family? Will you come past, you know, your home to come when I'm calling you and trust me that I have all of those things in my hand if you come? Will you trust me that I know you have those things to take care of, but if you'll come when I call you and put me first, you'll find that I have made a place for you beyond anything you've ever seen and known. Yeah. That's why I think in the in the parable, he was so angry with the invited ones because he was angry, not me, because you don't understand what you just missed. You just don't understand what I offered you. I was sharing my kingdom with you. And you said, I can't come now. And so now that you didn't want that place, I'm going to have to go to the highways and the byways. I'm going to bring in the lame, the halt, and those that you would never think would ever come, those that you never think would be ready. And they're going to come. They're going to take your place because when I called to bring you into that place, you found another place and you wouldn't give up that place for this place. And I think that's why he was really upset because what he was offering them was for eternity of eternities. Uh, I'm just going to read Nicole what she wrote. She said, our generation has been so hit hard with being fatherless or motherless and abandoned and having both parents but never having a relationship with them because of things like jobs and whatever. So we go out, we try to find some fulfillment. Then the enemy brings in deception that we don't need anyone. But the, tr- but the truth is that we do. And that one we need is God. He's the only one that can ever fill the void and emptiness. And when we are finally surrendered to him, we are completely transfigured. Amen. It's right on the call. Thank you for sharing that. But think about it. You know, as we as we close tonight, you know, what would you all say to the, the people in the country that may watch this? Because you don't have to be in New York. This is not just a New York thing. You might be in in where, what, Ankeny, is it Ankeny, Iowa? 
You might be in Ankeny, I look at that. I'm pretty, you're impressed? Yes. Yeah. You might be in Ankeny, Iowa, or Gulf Breeze, Florida, or Waterbury, Connecticut, or Providence, Rhode Island, you know, or in Austin, Texas, you know, or in Sacramento, California. And you may find this broadcast tonight, or you might be in a nation that God is speaking to you. What would you say to them? And why would God say come and be with him and meet him as a breath of life? So I want you to look at the camera, look at everybody and share what you that what you'd want to say with them. All right. I'll start with Ethan and Kelly up on, on the top here. So, so what would you say to those that are hearing this tonight? I mean, You know, it's almost even hard to put into words sometimes, you know, when you when you just reflect on just the goodness of God. But, you know, I, I think it's going back to, you know, the reality. And and I and, I, and this is really, you know, not to discredit, you know, where you're at, you know, if, you know where your journeys have been. But really just this, I've, this is what I believe, you know, that we've all been hoping and dreaming for is just this true encounter with Jesus. Like it's it's not something that we have to wait, you know, until we pass on this earth. Like we, this is truly the living embodiment, the body of Christ functioning and, and being together with our, with our bridegroom King. And it's, it's really just a, a true love exchange um, that you experience, you know, when you encounter God in, in this way, um, you know, there, there's so much that gets settled. There's so much that gets um, positioned in you, you know, when you attend an, when you intend, a, uh, excuse me, when you attend a convergence, um, just because, you know, it, it's just like everything just gets heightened in you. You become so aware, you become so, they, there's so much clarity that comes into your life. There's so much peace that comes to your life, so much joy, so much freedom. Um, you truly encounter all, encounter all the fruits of the spirit, you know, when you're in, you know, when you're in the presence, you know, of God in this way. Um, so I just, I, I truly just encourage you, you know, if you, you know, if you, if there's, if there's a dissatisfaction in you, if you, you know, you may, you may be successful at your job. You may have a, you know, a good marriage, you may have good relationships, you know, but there's still something in you. That's just like, is there more, you know, is the, is there, am I missing something? Don't ignore that because this is the invitation. This is truly the invitation to really, to really, um, you know, satisfy pun intended the dissatisfaction that you have, because, um, you know, you don't really know what you're missing until, you know, God comes in, in this, in this way. And, and, and so it's just like my aware, you know, there's been so much that has changed in my life since, you know, since becoming a part of this team and become, and, and going to a convergence is that just like God just deals with us and quicks and quickens so much in us and he uproots so much in us. And that's not something to be afraid of, but that's truly an honor to really, uh, and, and really a loving thing of God to truly just finish us. Like you, we really enter into a finished uh, work of us. It, it's not, you know, where we go through life and we, you know, we, we, we slowly, but surely get to there. It's like, this is just like a, like, like what you're there, like there, there, you're, you're in that reality. You're in with God to the deeps of the deep. And, and, and so just, this is truly an invitation to surrender your life and to truly, you know, come with an open heart and, and God will truly fill you and overflow you, um, in ways that you can never have imagined. Amen. Yeah. I was getting some revelation as we were having this broadcast tonight, when, um, especially when Jared was speaking. I was just recognizing in a deeper way that um, I'm created in the image of God and that all of us are created in the image of God and that we are meant to be expressions of him here on the earth. And um, when we when we gather in this way, at these, this intimate way that he's calling us to come meet, um, we each are, he, he moves through us and he displays himself through us in the expression that, that he created us to be. Um, and I just hadn't really fully seen it that way until we were talking tonight um, because we weren't created for ourselves we weren't created to display ourselves. Um, we weren't, yeah, it, it's just, it just really dawned on me. So um, yeah, this, this space, this space that God is creating, this place he's bringing us into will reflect his glory 
in each one of us like um like no other place right now um it sounds like he may be doing this in other places all across the world um it's not just us is what i've heard um but this is like though he's using us um in different ways he wants to i mean this is just an invitation from us but like he's probably doing this other places but anyway yeah so he he wants to fill fill the earth um with his glory and um for his out of his sovereignty and his wisdom he chose to do that through us humans <laughs> so glory to god amen praise god i'm gonna go to ethan and amber next thing Amen. I said I said I no. Yes, I said it right. No. Jared and Amber. Sorry. Jared and Amber. Thank you. Thank you for your grace. I get I will get it right, I promise you. So this is Jared and Amber. That's Ethan and Kelly. So the so Jared and Amber are now gonna share. Sorry, guys. Thank you. Okay. Um you gotta look at the big picture and don't don't miss your moment of why you were created. Don't let your job, don't let, don't let what's in your life, you know, you know, eclipse the one who gave you life. You, you can't do that. Don't, don't, don't miss the moment. Uh, you, you know, everything, what can really compare against God? I mean, really, what can really compare against God? You know, it's, it's not even a competition. And so, um, Lord, I just ask that you would just give whoever is hearing this, Lord, eyes to see and ears to hear in this moment. God, just to just to hear your call. Mm -hmm. uh, man, God loves you so much, and uh, uh, He is He's drawing you. So just let Him draw you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um. Yeah, I'm just so captivated by the voice of the Father that has come through this broadcast and so um yeah my my heart is just that each one who hears this would hear the voice of your father and that you would truly see that um your seat at the table is open and you're not only welcomed by the father but you're welcomed by your brothers and sisters too um if you're like me i mean life hurts right like family relationships hurt and church relationships hurt, you know, not all of them. I'm not saying they're all terrible or something, but they, they cause us pain. We're hurt and we're wounded. And we really wonder at some point, like, will we ever experience real love and just that real safety, that real security? Will we know it? Will we ever find rest, you know? And that seat at the table that has your name on it is a seat of rest. It's a seat where you are fully accepted by your father and you are embraced by your brothers and sisters. And this convergence, like Kelly said, it's one opportunity. It's one opportunity to answer that call to come and to sit with your father, to sit with your brothers and sisters, to express the fullness of who you are with no shame, no hindrances, and, you know, um, to allow that deep cry that is in all of us because we were made for him, you know, so um, that deep cry be released to him. And then for you to hear the deep cry of your father that says, I long for you. I desire you. I will heal you. I will set you free. And then for your heart to be touched by him to the depths, I mean, he and his love will change you and you will never be the same. And so, um, yeah, the, you know, it really is. The table is set. Your chair is available. You know, your name is on it. And, and the message is really just come, come, leave everything. There's nothing in this world. There's no job. There's no home. There's no, there's, there's no earthly family, right? That can satisfy the deep within you. And so I hope that that deep within you is, is hearing the deep of God that saying all is ready. Come, come and sit at my table. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Hey, I'm going to go to Sarah next. 
character. Yeah, so I would just say that um, whatever holds you back, if it's fear, if it's work, if it's I've never done this before, I would just tell you to throw it all away and uh, that it's so worth the price of meeting the Lord in this way that you won't ever be the same. And looking back, I'm it scares me to think what where I would be if I didn't come here, if I didn't come and meet the Lord in this way, where would I have been? And so I don't want you to miss your opportunity to sit at that place that he's made for you. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss it. And you just need to know how badly the Lord wants you here, how badly we want you here, how badly he wants you here more than you even know, more than you even know. So and no one else can take your place here. No one else has a place like you do here. And he's making this place ready just for you. So it it, it is worth the price, it is worth the time, it is worth the energy. And I expect that you're not just coming to a convergence, you're coming to meet the Lord and be completely changed. Amen. Amen. All of you feel beautiful what you're saying. I'm going to wrap up a J here tonight. Brother, you know, this is a call to the nations. It's a call to the to our to, to the saints of God now, an invitation. And, and, and God chose where you are for us to gather together. So would you speak to speak what God put in your heart to those that he may be drawing to this? Why they should come? Yeah. Amen. Uh, I know that for me, I was, I had such an intellectual view of God, such a, I don't know, such a striving, such a, uh, so many different things. I was buried so far underneath, you know, under the things of this, this region. And I had no idea who I really was. I had no idea who I was. And I was striving to earn love and to, and to find myself and find a place and to find acceptance and all these different things. And just in coming, just in, in coming and sitting at his feet and having him speak into my life and, and, and lift me out of that place. And that's, that's really what he does. He just, he gives you a whole, he gives you a new perspective, but he makes, he makes you new. He wants to make you new and breathe life into you, but create this whole new you become a whole new person and you know I, I i can hear him saying like come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden i will give you rest and i think we've we've been striving for so long in this region just this bondage to trying to earn love and trying to to feed ourselves under the curse and and the lord is saying come buy and eat you know like it's freely available it's it's you know the door is open like it's the table is set come like i i'm giving it freely you know this new habitation is, is a new you, you know, it's a heavenly you, like the, the you I created you to be. Come find out who you really are. Come find out who you really are and, and what I really called you to do, what life really is. We haven't been living. We have not been really living. And, and who cares what they say about this region or, you know, like whatever, like God is, is going to move so powerfully, like be excited. Let's be excited. Because in those dark places, he shines all the brighter. I'm just, I'm so excited and so anticipating uh, such a such a powerful move and just a drawing and a lifting and a transformation like we've never seen it. And I, I just want to say, come and and engage and, you know, don't. This is the time of spectating is over. You know, it, whatever that looks like to engage it doesn't. You know, even if you can't come, you know, be a part of what God is doing. You know, this is. This is what God is doing. This is where he's moving and he wants you to engage and be a part of it. Uh, recently, he, I felt like he extended his hand to me um, to, to join him in the dance, you know? And then I, and then he, 
he extended both his hands and he's like, I want both of your hands for this, you know? And I think that's the invitation. Like he wants us to experience, he wants us to full surrender. He wants us to give both hands to give our to go all in, jump all in with this because he's bringing us to a place where eventually we're going to have to do that anyway. But he's saying, come, the invitation is here now to go all in. But if you'll do that, we'll experience the all of him. And it's, it's so worth it. And I'm just, I'm so excited um, to have you join us and, and experience him like we've experienced him. And I'm going to close tonight by speaking to the, my fivefold ministry, brothers and sisters, pastors, prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists. You're probably going to say you're crazy, but that's all right. You can say I'm crazy. But what you have dreamed about to see the people grow, those that he's entrusted you, grow in wisdom and knowledge and know the Lord for themselves and become functioning, breathing, living, worshiping warriors, disciples of the Lord, which is what we were called to do. We weren't just called to preach the gospel of the nations, but we were called to make disciples in the nations. And the, our best, the best we did, the best I did in the church age, I don't know how many disciples were made from that. I hope there were a few. But a disciple's like his master. And how can you be like somebody you don't know? We have taught the church how to work. We taught them how to do. But we never taught them how to be. We never taught them how to become. We never taught them the ways of the Lord very often. And so they know how to work for God. They know how to sit and they know how to, that you give them an assignment and they'll do it. Right. And they'll do it joyfully and cheerfully because they're serving the Lord. But you realize they can do all of those things and never really know him, mm. never really see him, never, ne never hear him, that they become dependent upon you feeding them, you know, and not that we're not supposed to, but if I'm feeding them the right food, they're going to learn how to get the food find the source of the food for themselves and in that you can rejoice because now they become sons they become mature sons and daughters and now they can become families and they can have children and you begin to rejoice because now you see them taking their place as a man and a woman or a son or a daughter of god and you see them walking what in god what god created in them and in a very small way we have a part as servants of the lord to get underneath them to help them to become everything that God created them to be. And so no longer do we see them. You know, we begin to see them from see them from the church structure eyes. We begin to see them from God's value eyes. And now they don't become an end to building your ministry. And now they don't become tools so that you can fulfill your vision. I'm not saying that God's not giving you a vision, but you don't see them that way. You see them the way God created them. And that very vision, my beloved brothers and sisters, God's given you, believe it or not, it's in the people that God has allowed to join with you. And if you help them become everything God created them to be, that vision that God showed you will come into existence, not by your hands, but by God's hands. Instead of you trying to form us, and like we did in the church, form them into what we think they should be, they actually get formed into what they're supposed to be by God. And you will see. And I've seen this with my own eyes. Let me just give you a practical illustration. So planning one of these convergences takes a lot of work. And in the beginning, it was me and Lynn and Donna. And then I was blessed by having Jared and Amber saying, I really want to help you. And that little bit of help was, wasn't a little bit of help. It was like a rescuing because God knew where this was going to expand. And then from there to watch everybody come in. And I watched Ethan and, and Kelly in prayer and use it and taking responsibilities and jay taking an area of responsibility and and and, and um ethan excuse me and, and and jared and amber take the responsibilities and 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 uh, and all of our team and our deployment team that and that you don't see in the operational teams they have done a work of god by the spirit of god helping that i have never seen before all I asked was, this is what needs to be done. And I asked them to do one thing, pray and get the mind of God to show you how to do it. And they did it with the spirit of excellence. They did it with that spirit of Daniel and Meshach and Shadrach and Abednego. And they have become true servants of the Lord because they are in a position where God can show them and teach them what to do. And so now 
I don't have to be neglectful for the word of God in prayer, like it says in the Bible, but now God can trust into these precious ones that are sitting at the table of the Lord. They're giving a supernatural ability for the gifts that God's placed in them come to the surface and you can see it. And you don't try to use it for your gain, but you see their giftings and that which God wants us to do, you can see this is where they belong. This is their part. And all of a sudden you work with the Lord to help place the body in its right place, but you're not placing them from your mind or your heart or your understanding or anything that, that makes you gain. It makes God gain and they gain and we gain together. It is beautiful. I mean, the assignments, I mean, that I watched them do were done with such excellence. I didn't even have to touch it. Very little did I have to say because they stood, they heard God, they listened, they put it together accurately. And, you know, it's what we dream about as ministers. It's what we dream for, that, that we have a true ministry of helps, not one created in our image, but one birthed by the very heart of God. And they become helpers and laborers, just like Jesus. We become the helpmate of the Lord. They become the helpmates of the Lord as his bride were the helpmate. Think of what I'm saying tonight. We actually literally become the helpmate. And Sarah functioned in her area as a helpmate. And Ethan and, and, and Kelly are functioning as a helpmate. Jay is and Nicole, Jeremy, uh, Cheryl, Patricia, Lynn, Mary, uh, Dolores are all functioning as helpmates of the Lord by the instructions of the God that they're receiving from themselves. The Lord is just putting blueprints in my hands. That's it. But you, you know, I'm not a plumber. You know, I'm not an electrician. I don't know how to do those things, but the body of Christ does. And they are given just like when God gave Moses the tabernacle, there were skilled craftsmen that the spirit of God came in them and they were able to build exactly what God wanted to be built. Same thing with David. And that's what is in the body of Christ that's buried. It's buried under a system that you can never find. The workers and laborers that God needs to advance his kingdom are there, but they're yeah. not there the way you think. They're not right. the, way, the way that we have learned under the church age. They function at that table. They function at that table. Everything that God made them comes alive in yeah. them. And now they can see what you see. They can hear what you hear. They can they, they know what you know. And so it's no longer you giving them a list of 10 things to do. And now you're faithful. They when, when they see what needs to be done, God shows them and they take what he shows you and they add that gift to it. They add their multicolor to it. They see it in a different way. And I'll tell you, you guys have done ways I would never even thought of with your spreadsheets, the way you organize things. I was so impressed with God. I was so impressed with God in you. Now, what's the last time a, a pastor or anyone could look at the people that God has allowed them to, 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 to pray with and stand with and be able to say, well done, thy good and faithful servants. Isn't that what we long for, pastors, apostles, prophets, teachers? Don't we see that the methods that we used for, for yesterday, they can't work now? We're in a new day. It's a new, we need the accelerant of God. We need the maturing of God. We need the miracle go of God so that, that this body can come into a full grown body, a wheel within a wheel, functioning army of the Lord. I'm watching it happen before my eyes. And you can think I'm crazy. And maybe this video will touch somebody five years from now when you begin to see what the Lord is doing. I'm not doing it so that 100 people can watch it tonight. This is for posterity. This is to begin to declare the sovereign work and move of God. And maybe it may mean nothing to somebody today, but it's going to. These testimonies of what you heard are going to mean something to somebody tomorrow, the next day, as they gain the revelation of the Christ. And the pastors and the apostles said, God, I am done. I'm burning the ships of yesterday. Yeah. Lord, show me what you want. Show me. Lord, teach me your ways so that th that which is built is built by your hands. And they may find this video and they may look at these people on the screen to see the work of God that he has done through these convergences of the tool God is using to bring the change and the transformation that we've all been waiting for. We've all been saying God is doing a new thing. We've all been saying we need a new wineskin. It's right here in yes. front of you. It's right here for you to see tonight. It's right here to see the work of God if you'll 
people see it. It doesn't look pretty. There's not 10,000 people on there. It's not seeing crowds down on the streets worshiping the Lord or whatever they're doing. But it is just as powerful and just as needful and just as impacting because it's going to shake nations from this little teeny thing that God seems to be doing. It's going to transform nations. Why? Because it's God. Amen. Because it's God. And it's rippling. And we're coming to New York to ripple. The wind blows things. And when it blows upon the water, it ripples. When it blows upon the fire, it spreads. And we're coming to New York for the breath of God to spread upon the fire and the ripples of water to bring an everlasting change to every single one of you that will come to this gathering. Every single person. Uh, every one of you that will be participating in every single one of you that pray for it every single one of you that 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 give your finances to help us do it understand what you're doing tonight understand your part tonight those yeah. of you that are behind the scenes that are not on this camera how valuable you are to god tonight because you are functioning people are saying listen i'll take care of taking care of this pastor henry can i take care of this for you can i pay for that i've never seen that before in my life because it's god it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God, it's God. And beloved pastors, apostles, prophets, and teachers, you can get behind that pulpit to your blue in the face. You can keep teaching them the principles, step one, step two. And they may say, great message, pastor. They may take good notes. Maybe one or two will get it, but that's not their place. Their place is not to sit. Their place is to become. Their place is at the table. Spread the table where you're at. Spread the table at your meeting. Spread the table and invite them to come. And first of all, invite Jesus to come because that's what the convergence is all about. Yeah. We're coming to be with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So I say to you, if you want to see it in action, you want to see it, come. Come, empty your schedule, Pastor. You know, empty the schedule and test it for yourself. See if this is not true or not. Mm -hmm. Test it. Find out for it. Come with an open heart. Come with an open mind. I watch bishops who are pastoring how many thousands and thousands of people come and say, we're here because this is God. And we're just coming here to be the servant of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I believe that is what God desires that's going to form that wheel within a wheel in the army of the Lord. So I hope that encourages you Fightful Ministers, and I want to thank this team and all the team that's on there that's written the comments from Donna to Lynn to Nicole to Sonia and, and, and all the other people that are on there that have been sharing. You are so much part of us. And most of us know that you prayer warriors, we would have made it without you. So we thank you for that. So thank you for watching the broadcast. I pray it was a blessing to you. And uh, we'll sign off tonight. We'll, we'll be doing this next Thursday night. It'll be Thursday night next week. We're going to do another one of these broadcasts. And we're going to try to do one once a week so that we can get prepared for it. So share this. And that brother that's sharing this tonight, and I know it's going to be longer. So you get warn people ahead of time. Watch it in sections if you have to. You know, But it's important that we take the time you know, to share what the Lord is doing. So thank you, everyone. And everybody stay on. I'm going to get off the broadcast. Okay, but if you all stay on so I can say goodnight to you, that'd be great. Say goodnight to everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night.